Well, hello everyone. Happy Friday, everybody in the chat. Hopefully you guys are having a good Friday, getting ready for a good weekend. Hopefully, Doge Dog. Thank you so much for being in the chat. Beeble Bum as well, and Coco Belly Bob. Very awesome seeing you in the chat. Good to hear that you're kind of getting be better, Beeble Bum. Kind of getting better. I mean, I don't think everyone's a hundred percent just because you were always constantly like not sleeping really, especially when you get old. Like me, you didn't sleep very well or you slept like last night. I think I slept on my side a little too hard. So I, my neck was like this. So now my neck hurts. Well, it feels good when I do that. But when I straighten it up, it hurts real bad right here. And it's because I slept wrong. So yeah, <laughs> I can imagine you just constantly just don't feel a hundred percent. Uh, Steve McNeely, and now live from the scenic Jason Bunker is Jason Plays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta get out of my, uh, my radio voice. Can't do that. Tyler, how did you do that? I've tried to multiple times do a member chat and include words, and it won't let me. Tyler, thank you so much for being a member for 18 months. Hey, hope you're doing well. I'm doing awesome. I'm doing awesome, Tyler. Got into some Diablo. I probably stayed up a little bit too late last night playing Diablo. I know a lot of people are down on it right now because of nerfs and the patches, but man, I am loving Diablo. But right now we are playing No Man's Sky. We're gonna be doing an extreme outlaw run. Uh, Beeble Bum says last night I slept four hours. I hate it, totally destroys motivation and creativity. Yeah, when you're exhausted, you, your brain just doesn't want to do anything other than sleep. And then Beeble Bomb with a member only chat. We're a member chat for 17 months saying it's because you suck, Jason. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, Jason, you suck. Yeah, I got that, Beeble Bomb. I have it. There you go. <laughs> but yes, every time I try to chat, it just says, nope, sorry, you can't. Maybe I'm just not cool enough. I don't know. Yeah, I, I won't, it won't let me. <laughs> it won't let me chat. Ah, uh, Ignacio Escobar says, Jason, greetings from Chile. Thank you for hanging out in Chile. Uh, hope you, your neck gets better soon. Have you played No Man's Sky on your new PS5? How do you feel? Or does it, you feel any different? Oh, I should do that. You know what? I was going to play on uh, PC. This, oh, wait a minute. You know what? Give me a minute. I'm back. I'm back. You know what? I was going to do it on uh, on my PC, but you know what? I got a PS5 right here. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I got to set some stuff up. And I will say I have not downloaded the game. So this is going to be a... This might be a minute, but we could do this. We could do this. And then Doge Dog. Thank you for being a member for two months. Going on three, I hope. Hi, got to start to upload when I get these software. Do do it. Do it. The biggest option, the, the biggest obstacle for a lot of people is, oh, I don't have all the best equipment or I don't have this or that. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Literally just jump in and do it. Just doesn't matter how good or bad your videos are. They're always going to be. My first video was terrible. The first time you do it, it's not going to be the best because it's the first time. You will get there and it'll be great. It'll get better and better every time, but you can't get better unless you start doing it. So you got to jump in there and do it. Oh God. And I got to search here. I, I'm doing all this stuff on the, uh, my, my PlayStation, but I don't want to show you guys all like my, my credit card number and all that kind of stuff. No means sky. Let's get the, uh, wave it, wave it, wave it. I have a feeling it's going to go on sale next week, you guys. I might wait till next week to get it. Because if you did not know, let me show you. I have... Oh, where's my face at? There it is. I have a PS5. I can get it right now, but it's full price. I have a feeling we're going to see an update soon. So 
whenever, not every time, but usually when there's an update, they actually make it cheaper. So... I don't even have it. I've been playing some, uh... I could show you guys. I've been playing some, uh... Hey. Some Demon Souls and some fantasy, Final Fantasy. I've, I've been playing the demo. Not really sold on Final Fantasy, but I've been playing some Dark Demon Souls. Anyway, don't overspend. Yeah, no, I, I have a feeling. I would feel like garbage if, if I bought it today and it goes on sale Monday. <laughs> I'll be like, what the no, no. So I'm gonna wait. I mean, technically I could, but I have like. I have a, a Nintendo version, I have a, a PC version, I have an Xbox version, I have a ton of stuff from the marketplace. So, <laughs> I don't want to pay full price. <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit of a, a cheapskate on it. Just buy it! I know I should. I should. But we're not going to. Okay, so let me, let me pop this back. I'll be right back. Oh god, I got an update. Okay. Back again. Cheapskate is good. I know. Well, I mean, I have If my wife is listening, don't don't listen. <laughs> Every time there's an update, I try to buy new stuff off of the uh, merchant merchandise store, the merch store for No Man's Sky. The problem is, I bought everything there. <laughs> so, I can't buy anything anymore because I don't, I don't want to get, like, doubles. I don't want to keep buying the same thing over and over again. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Captain Steve. We liked your super chat. Wait a minute, did I miss a super chat from Steve? Did I? Wait a minute, let me go back up. I could scroll back up here. Dude, Captain Steve! Thank you so very much for the super chat. Saying, will you be getting Enshrouded? Looks like Valheim, but better. Ooh, I need to look at Enshrouded. I have not... That's under my radar. I did not see Enshrouded, Steve, but I'm going to have to look at that. I love all these cool games, especially if it's like Valheim. Oh, I will get there. I will get that. Uh, Beeblebum says, I applied for Enshrouded beta access. They replied to me and then never got back to me afterwards. I want to play for sure, though. Oh, Oh, I well, I need to go do that. I need to go tell him, hey, I'm I'm interested. You wanna you wanna let me play that game? I mean, I I don't I don't mind buying it, <laughs> but so usually I try to get a press copy because they give it to you early, and I'm I'm impatient. I just want it early. Not that I can get it for free. I just want it early. Uh, Sith Gasm says, where's your Starfield hat and shirt? Oh, it's getting there. It's getting there. I have my controller. I would use my headphones, but I think we, we I think we already talked about this. I have the Starfield headphones. However, they're wireless and in my setup because I have a whole analog setup with like wired microphones and uh, condensers and all that kind of stuff. If I use a wireless headset, there's a delay, about a half of a second delay, which drives me crazy. So if something will happen on the screen, I won't hear it for about point, you know, five seconds. Drives me crazy. That's why I don't use the headset. I would. But I can't use it for my my streaming. I use it whenever I play my uh, Xbox. Whenever I'm like doing uh, Diablo, I'll use it there. All right. Well, we'll do this then. There we go. We'll switch back over. We're gonna do PC, and then next week we'll be doing PlayStation because I have a feeling it'll be on a uh, sale. It'll go on sale. I mean, maybe not next week. Maybe the week after. Pretty soon. Whenever there's an update coming, generally it will go on sale. Sithgasm member for 10 months, dude. Wait a minute. Um, I was not expecting that. Sithgasm, thank you so much for being a member for 10 months, saying, where is your Starfield t-shirt and hat? It's coming, it's on the way. And then Steve McNeely, the donation. Thank you so very much, saying 42 days. Is that, the, is that 42 days until early access? Because now I get confused. I know, I think it's 42 days till early access. I think it's 47 until actual release. I'm going to be playing early access. You know I'm going to be playing early access, Steve. But thank you so very much. 07 to you, Steve. All right. Whew. We got that done. I got to get my controller. I got to make sure I get the right controller. I don't have my PlayStation. I have my 
Starfield PC controller. There we are. So, guys, if you don't know, we're doing a, an extreme outlaw run today. That means, basically... Oh, well, look at my singularity. 37-minute time. Still there. All right. Uh, basically, we are going to be playing an extreme difficulty... Uh, setting so we're gonna go to permadeath and then we're gonna change everything over to the extreme and the whole idea of the run is that you're an outlaw you're an outlaw trying to escape the galaxy we have to get to the center of the galaxy however because we're an outlaw we cannot be seen by the galactic authorities meaning can't go to space stations don't don't talk to aliens that are not pirates that kind of stuff you're trying to stay off the grid as much as possible and get to the center. So all the d the the rules for the uh, the playthrough are going to be down below in the description if you want to kind of go through it. But essentially, it's like a no starter ship run, but even harder because you cannot go to. We can go to uh, pirate stations, but you have to have a solar ship to do that. Extreme Walking Simulator 2.0. Midnight? No, we're going to get this done real fast. It's going to be... It's going to... You're going to not believe it. Your mind is going to be blown on how fast we go. All right. So everything is... The, excuse me. Everything's extreme. Let me look. Make sure. Double check. Everything's over to the right as far as we can go. So that is the most difficult if you're over to the right. Most difficult. Easier settings are over here on the left. So everything's extreme. Predators are on. I like how there's a passive and a defensive uh, predators. Okay. All right. So here we go. And we're starting a random, brand new save. So we start with nothing. And we're on extreme, which means we have really, really limited inventory. We're on permadeath, so if we die, the game is over. And we take more damage because we're on a more extreme difficulty. The uh, Sentinels are more aggressive. You know, uh, animals are more aggressive. Everything's more aggressive, and they do more damage. So, <laughs> Jason's going to die. Lots. No way. Nope. We got this, you guys. We got this. So, we start at 17 minutes. Keep that in mind. We have that time. We have the vote in the poll if you guys want to hit that that poll. See how, how long it takes me to get my ship and get the heck out of the planet or off the planet. Let's see. Oh, we're on a hot planet. This is already not good. All right. Looks like a volcano planet. Maybe not a volcano planet. All right, we got to look around for a cave. Because that'll help us out early. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. No cave. Okay, fine. I was hoping maybe we'd have a cave, but no cave. That's cool. Let's get some plants going here. Do we have any plants? Oh, God. The beginning of the run is always the most difficult one because this is where you don't have any materials. You don't, you can't make anything. You need to collect everything and get the heck out of here. You, that's why we look for a cave because a cave will save you a little bit. But I'm not, I'm not getting any of that now. Get some sodium while we're waiting. Is this going to be a plant? Nope. Ferrite dust. I guess we're going for the trees. Oh, look at the little geck. Hey, buddy. All right. Got a cave? Looks like a cave. Yeah, we're in a cave. Okay, so you want to be in a cave because it does not use any of your hazard protection when you're covered, when you're in a cave or you're underground or anything like that. And you can get a, uh, you can get cobalt, which can turn into batteries. I don't have enough. I have one of my... Uh, I need to get some... Uh... Come on. Give me some carbon. And yeah, they're not going to kill it? Okay. Dude, good lord. That took forever. I need carbon. Sodium. Five hour stream, Jason. Walking in circles. Never. Never. I will say, I hope I get a... Uh... A backpack refiner real fast because, man, <laughs> I would love that. But I think you could only get that from a, a, a freaking grave. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Nothing. All right. We don't have any, uh, we don't have any uh, carbon down here. So that's going to suck. We can get a whole bunch of uh, 
cobalt. Wait a minute. Oh god, where's my... Where's my way out? Okay, there it is. There we go. Let's get some carbon. I want to scan stuff. You gotta have a scanner for this. Or a visor, I should say. Carol! Thank you for being a member for 17 months. Thank you so very much. 07 says, don't die! I'm not gonna die. We got it. We, we have a cave. We're good. We already have our uh, cobalt. That way we can make some batteries. It's gonna be okay. Let's make a uh, nanotube. That way we can make a visor real fast. There we go. Do we have enough? No, we don't. Okay, but we can scan this stuff. You want the secondary items. So scan everything you possibly can to get that secondary material. Oh, yeah. Like, we're going to get oxygen out of there. That's a good one. That's a good one. Was the last speed run a uh, tie? Yes. Stealth it was. So we all tied at 37. Technically, I, I, for me, and I'm not saying it's, you know, the official thing or not. I think that Mo, M-O-H, is the winner because he got 37 first, and then Delta got it, and I got it. So I was technically last, but we all tied for time. We all got 37. I just happened to get it last. So to me, Mo was first, Delta second, and I'm third. So why are you not allowed to scan anything? I am allowed. I just, you know, I couldn't because I didn't have my visor, Roberta. I had to, I had to build it because we started a fresh save. I didn't have a visor, so I had to build one. And I mean, I, sometimes I don't like to because if you get upgrades, like if you get a scanner upgrade, it'll actually give you more money. So like right now, if I scan this rock, I got $200 for that. I got 200, you know, units. But if I had an upgrade, I'd get even more money for it. So sometimes it's beneficial to wait and only scan stuff later on once you get some upgrades. That way you can make more money doing it. Uh, but you don't have to. Like, there's nothing that prevents me from scanning it. There we go. So now we can scan these rocks and hopefully we'll get, like, copper out of it or something good like that. Let's see. What are we getting? Ionized cobalt. There you go. We're getting regular and ionized from the same rock. I love it. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We got to analyze that one, too. And Dr. Pong. Thank you for the uh, super chat saying, suck it. <laughs> suck it, Jason. Wait a minute. Suck it, Jason. There you go, Dr. Pong. <laughs> Oh, love it. Love it. Uh, there we are. There you are, Dr. Pong. I uh, should check and see if I can get a license for that song and make Jason compilation midnight now. Oh, what did midnight say? Oh, no. I missed it. Let me let me scroll up here a little bit. Midnight. Uh, Royal Republic Walk. Perfect soundtrack for Jason. <laughs> Why? Why? Hey. I'm just, I'm a good walker. I, I, you know, I'm uh, maybe weird information, but just, just fired off in my brain. My wife and I have started uh, because we want to try to uh, get out more. So that's why my, my, <laughs> you guys want to see something really crazy. Let me show you this. Let me show you this real fast while we're doing, oh yeah, wait, wait, er. so that's my arm. That's what color I normally am. So I'm getting really dark. Uh, oh, better option, better option, right here, watch this. So, arm, it's kind of dark, but then, look at how white that skin is, oh my god! I am getting a lot of sun, we we're trying to get outside and get more sun. That's what I'm doing, so, yeah. <laughs> it's like, the worst farmer's tan of all time. It is so bad. I have, like, the palest, like, upper arm bicep you'll ever see. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, farmer tan crazy chaos. It's so bad. And because I'm, we, my wife and I, we were getting out. We're walking for an hour every morning. I do yard work every weekend, so I'll go outside. I mow the grass, and I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of yard to mow. <laughs> I will say it's not a, quite an acre, but it's pretty big. It's pretty big. So 
I'm out there for about four hours mowing the grass, weed whacking, getting everything all light. It's, yeah, it's, uh, I'm out there for a while, so I get a lot of sun. Let's see, we can grab all, I don't think this is going to be worth it. I don't think these are worth a lot. Let me see. Um, no. Oh my god, and they only stack up to three? Nope, we're going to get rid of that. We can't afford that. That is not enough room. Three of them? I thought they would stack up to five or ten. Oh my god. Push mower? Yes, Jazz. Yes. Push mower. I'm not rich enough to have one of those cool riding mowers. <laughs> so yeah, push mower for a big yard. And I mean, I'm not mowing every square foot. Don't get me wrong. I'm not out there mowing like, you know, a big old acre with a push mower. But I'm mowing a good chunk of it. It's about four hours. Uh, you should shave your head so you can tan your head too. No, Warlord, no. I when I was in high school, way back in the day, we had we had a class called ROTC, and so that's basically like the military class in your uh, in your school. And uh, I was in ROTC, and there was a point where I was like, oh, I'll just shave my head because you had to keep your hair really short. And I was like, I'll just shave my head. Worst decision ever. I have a lumpy head. It's terrible. I when I finally lose my hair, it, it's gonna happen. I probably will lose my hair, but when it happens. I'm going to be a hat person for sure because <laughs> I don't want you guys seeing my lumpy head. <laughs> Time to start Jason's riding mower go for me. Oh, no. It's actually good exercise. I mean, realistically, could I get a, a riding lawnmower? Sure. I, I like the push one. I mean, not on the days I have to really get when it's really sunny and hot. I don't like it those days. But realistically, I could get a riding lawnmower, but I like the... Uh, I like being able to push it around and kind of exercise a little bit. You know, work up a sweat, doing all that kind of stuff. You guys know I have to I have to organize this. You know I do. That'll turn into sodium. We can sell that. We can sell that. Okay. But yeah, so I could get a riding lawnmower. That might be a smart investment overall, but right now I like the exercise. I like getting out there and running over up and down and and because my yard is on a on a hill, my my front yard is flat, my backyard is slanted, and so it's bad. It's bad. I, there's days where I'm like, oh, I got my my knees are gonna hurt from running up and down this hill for two hours or whatever. All right, I think we have enough cobalt. We have enough ionized cobalt too. We need ferrite dust now. That way we can start making some batteries. We also need to get some dihydrogen. We can make uh, life support gels out of this. And now that we have a visor, we know which way is north. So I'm going to be heading north. In general, I like heading north because it just feels like that's like the direction to go. <laughs> and actually, before we go too far, because we didn't really move that far away. Let's do this. Let's see. Where am I at? Okay. So remember, that's where I'm at. That's where I am on the planet. That little yellow, like, uh, pin. That's where I am on the planet right now. We're right there at the bottom. Oh, my God. We're at the bottom right there. So we'll see how far north we can go. Maybe we'll go all the way up the planet. <laughs> Maybe we'll go all the way to the top. We'll get to the North Pole today. Uh, I'm just tired of repeating it. No. What are you doing? Check the stream description for the rules. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what we could do, Beeble Bum? You, I think you could do it, but here. Description for rules. And pop, and then we'll pin it. So hopefully that helps out a little bit. There you go. So yeah, if you if you want the detailed rules, go ahead and check the description. But in general, we're just playing, we're an outlaw on the run. We're trying to avoid the authorities and get to the center of the galaxy. Uh, Beeble Bomb says every uh, Jason stream is going south. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> That's not true. Most of them do, but not all of them. Not all of them. All right, we're going to need some uh, an advanced mining laser, too. So what you can do, up. Oh, let me scan this stuff, get my secondary objective or secondary material. What you can do is look for the damaged machinery because 
They have a possibility of giving you random upgrades. Also, buried technology or buried caches. They will do it as well. So you can look for those. There's a damage machinery. There's a cargo drop over there. Oh, we got two of them that are pretty close together. I like that. Maybe we'll get some nanites. Well, we'll probably get nanites, but maybe we'll get an upgrade out of here as well. Wow. I'm going to need to get some condensed carbon. Fecium! We need that! <laughs> Only for the uh, expedition. Maybe that's what... I should have done that. Maybe, I mean, whenever they do the replays, we'll try it. Maybe checking the uh, checking the damage machineries might give you Fecium. I didn't even think about that. It's not a guarantee, but it's a possibility. It's a possibility. So I didn't even think about it. We could have done that. It is cherished poop. Residual goop. I mean, we could take it, but I mean, at the end of the day, when you refine all that stuff down, it's not really going to give you anything good. It'll give you like five nanites. Up, oh, we have a uh, oh, broadcast tower. So we can't go there. You don't want to be seen by that, you know, any of the cameras around. We're going to pretend like we're a fugitive. And we don't want to be, we don't want to be caught on camera because then they'll know our location. So we're trying to avoid buildings. We're avoiding any aliens we see. I mean, unless they're uh, outlaws, like if they're pirates, they won't rat us out. But anyone else, any other normal alien will. So we're trying to avoid all the normal aliens, all the law abiding aliens. Oh, look at that. Do, do, do. You don't, you don't see me. You don't see me. Cat eats Snickers. Oh, you, what do you, you going to get trouble? Don't get in trouble, cat. Uh, people on pineapple also good. No way. Pineapple pizza, not good. Got that, got that. There we go. We got a good amount of, uh, got a good amount of batteries. Hit that like button. Oh, yeah, before we get too deep into it, guys, if you want to hit that like button, it does help out the channel a ton. So you might not think it, but YouTube does pay attention to that like button. They also pay attention to comments. You get more comments, the uh, more active your comment section is, the more YouTube loves it. So definitely leave a comment if you're comfortable. Hit that like button if you want. It'll help out the channel a ton. Uh, I assume if you come across a freighter rescue mission, you'll just attack that poor guy. I have to. I have to get my, uh, I have to get all the materials from him. One of the rules, though, is if you attack a freighter, you have to leave that system immediately. So you can't stick around because, of course, if you destroy a freighter, they're going to call the uh, police. So, you know, they're going to call the authorities. So you need to have, you need to get out of town or need, get out of that, uh, get out of that uh, system as quickly as possible. Oh, there is a building over here. What is it? It looks like it's a... What is this? It's in the rocks, it looks like. What is that? Is that a ship? Are you serious? Like 10 minutes in? Are you... No. Okay, come on. Come on. Please be a, a crashed ship. That would help me out a ton. I might not even have the right materials to do this. <laughs> I don't have enough. I need, I'm going to need metal plating. I'm going to need a uh, hermetic seal. Oh, crap. If we got it this early, I'm not ready. Oh, God. We're going to have to recharge here. Use that oxygen, I guess. I guess we can refine that into ferrite dust. What about sentinel interaction? Those are okay. Like, if you attack the Sentinels, you're, you're fine. It's not ideal. You don't want to do that, but you can. Oh, dang it. It's a monolith or a plaque. It's a plaque. I can learn a word. So these are not connected to the authorities. Any, like, ancient ruins or monolith or a plaque like this. Except, you know, they're not connected to the authorities, but they don't really help you either. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> It'll just teach you a word. It's like, okay, great. Ah, there's a damage machinery over here. 
But yeah, so like if the Sentinels come after me, it's not a big deal. You want to leave. You don't want to get attacked. But yeah, Sentinel interaction is fine. The local authorities are okay. You just want to get rid of the uh, Galactic. You don't want to uh, annoy the uh, Galactic authorities. Uh, something else that's tasty on pineapple is a giant purple people. <laughs> You're a giant purple people eater? All right. The other thing we have to do, probably, is make a, uh, make a terrain manipulator. We need carbon nanotubes and dihydrogen jelly. I can make the jelly. Oh, nanotubes, we're almost there. Look at that. We're almost there. We just need a little bit more. Do you have any, do you have any plants? There we go. There we go. Make another one. And now we're golden. There. So now we have a terrain manipulator so we can get these buried technologies that are down under the ground. Because you can sell these for a good amount of money. So definitely. And we could also get away from like the heat and stuff if we need to. Nothing. Grab some of those. Let's see. That's going to be for my uh, hazard protection. That's not going to help me right now. Um, it should be a new Jason quote. If that's a ship, I'm totally not ready for it. <laughs> we're almost there. We almost, we're almost ready. Uh, Ashley, dang it. <laughs> I would just panicking like oh my god we just it, usually you don't get a ship that fast sometimes you get lucky but usually you don't you gotta wait like a good like half hour before you run into one let's see what we got out of there a whole bunch of that inventory is almost full already let's see any other buildings around here i'm not seeing any so we can also look for a buried cache or buried cache. There you go. They will give you upgrades as well. So you can find a, there's a whole bunch of ways to get upgrades without going to the space station. The problem is it's randomized. So you have no idea if you're going to get an upgrade, number one, but number two, what it's going to be. It could be a ship upgrade. Like, well, that doesn't help me right now. Or it could be, you know, like a... Uh, upgrade that doesn't really matter to me. Like, it could be a, a water upgrade. I don't need that. <laughs> That's just taking up room in my inventory. So there's no choice. Like, there's no way to, to get a specific upgrade. At least right now. Let's see what we got out of there. I think we got nanites. I think we did get nanites out of there. Oh, no, we got gold. Okay, we got gold. Cargo drop. We need to get some oxygen going. Actually, you know what? We need to get some uh, life support gels. So we need to get some carbon. These little tiny ones give me condensed carbon. So, yeah, we'll get the little tiny plants. I want that condensed carbon. All right. Life support gels. Oh, no, we need to make jellies. Got to make some jellies. There we go. Pump that in here. Why do I have a carbon nanotube there? They don't only need two and I made three? Crap. <laughs> I made too many. All right. Hours later, Jason is still running in circles. No, no, no. We have a visor. I'm good. I'm good. You guys give me such a hard time about running in circles. I haven't done that in forever. <laughs> it's been at least oh a couple of months since I've went run in circles. Come on. <laughs> and that's only because we've been doing the uh, the expedition. That's the only reason. Oh. Uh,
All right. Can I get another one? Oh, hey, no. Okay. Ah, uh, where's my north? There you are. Keep heading north. Look around. We might find some good stuff around here. Nope. Nothing, nothing. You mean it's been months since you did a no starship run? Eh, maybe. Maybe. It has been a while. When I looked at it, it's... The last time we did a no starter or a uh, fugitive run or a no starter run was in May, I believe. So we didn't do anything in June because that, of course, that was the expedition. And we're about almost at the end of July now. And so, yeah, we haven't done one in about a couple of months. <laughs> Always glitchless. Uh, what did he say? Uh, walking in circles is normal. Well, of course, Moose, guys. If you're not following Moose and Beeblebum, you should be. But yes, uh, walking in circles is like a requirement. You got to be walking in circles or else what you doing? What are you doing? Nothing. So we have some buried, I uh, guess, some subterranean relics. Oh, wait. Condensed carbon. I'll take all of that. That'll help out with my mining beam. So I like to use condensed carbon for my mining beam and regular carbon for my health, for my life support shells. Dun, dun, dun. Michael Ray, thanks for joining us in chat. Michael Ray, thank you so much for hanging out, man. Very much appreciated. Uh, tech Center says, I dare you if you uh, don't find a ship in 10 minutes. I'm eating a pineapple pizza from Papa John's live. Oh, really? I need to. I, I think I might, as a joke, I might go, because I think it's, uh, who has the pineapple Pepsi? I think that's Little Caesars, right? I might order a Little Caesars pineapple pizza and a pineapple Pepsi just, just because it'd be funny. We might do that like on Monday or something. Not not a guarantee. Not not saying it's a guarantee, but maybe. Maybe we'll do that. Cause I just saw a commercial for I believe it's is it Little Caesars or who? Who does who's doing the pineapple uh Pepsi and pineapple pizza stuff? I dare you if you don't oh yeah, we got I read that one. Thank you, Tech Center. And then, uh, thanks, I heard Expedition and I got a little too excited. <laughs> hey, I'm hoping that we have an Expedition coming soon. We don't know for sure. We never do. They don't announce it very much ahead of time. So the way that No Man's Sky announcements work is you'll see on Twitter, Sean Murray, one of the head developers of No Man's Sky. His name is Sean Murray. He will tweet out an emoji and everyone gets excited because that means an update is on the way. We don't know when it's coming. It could be any day. We don't know what it exactly is. He'll tweet out an emoji about what generally what the uh, update is going to be about. However, they can be a bit ex abstract. So like for the uh, for the singularity update, he tweeted out a brain. What does that have to do with a singularity? I mean, eh, it's one of those deals where you got to really dig down and figure out what a brain means. And, oh, it's a singularity because it's a brain. Okay. Or uh, it has to do with humans and, and uh, machines going together. Okay, I can get that. Or he tweeted out a snowflake for the fractal update because snowflakes are fractal. And it's like, okay, you kind of know what that means, but really? Come on. Oh, there's a, a building over here. Let's see. The Origins update was an orange. I remember that. That was a big one, too, because everyone, there was so much because we had to wait. I think that was a long wait. So he tweeted out the orange emoji, and it was like, what, two or three weeks? Almost a month between when we found out and when the update actually came out. And so there was so much speculation. People were putting oranges in everything. <laughs> and we didn't know what it was. It was like, is it a fruit update? Are we getting fruit in No Man's Sky? What does an orange mean? And it was like, oh, it's origins. Okay. <laughs> what is this? It's not a building. Is this a ship? Or is it just a uh, damaged machine? Don't be just a damaged machine. Come on. 
I think it. Yeah, but it's just a damage machine. Dang it! Usually when there's a crashed ship, you'll see a uh, damaged machinery next to it. So this could be a crashed ship location, but not this one. This specific, this specific one is not. I hope it's a pineapple. Oh no! The pineapple update? It'll be the update I can't play because it's disgusting. <laughs> the pineapple update. Oh God, no. All right. Oh yeah, we need to fix our scanner probably. Yeah, we should probably do that. It's been broken for a while. Oh well. Scanner. We'll put that there so we can put any uh, any mining beam upgrades we get in here. Any scanner upgrades we can get in there. Um. Yeah, we're we're our, inven our inventory is getting kind of getting kind of low, or getting kind of cr uh, cluttered here. Yeah, we're we're okay. We're okay. Not ideal, but we're okay. All right. Let's head north. We have some sack venom. I think I need a, uh, I think I need a hazmat gauntlet in order to pick this up, though. Yeah, you need a hazmat gauntlet. Dang it! It's been so long. I I can't remember what you need gloves for. Shiny red flag. Thank you so very much for the ten gifted memberships. You're a legend, dude. Thank you so very much. You guys are freaking awesome. And everyone hitting that like button. You guys are freaking awesome too. Thank you so much for doing that. We're almost at 200 likes. You guys are freaking awesome. Thank you. Uh, it will be dedicated to Jason's digestive system. No. No. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. It'll be a pineapple update and it'll be just digestive. Like there'll be some new foods or whatever. There's a new uh, eating meter that we need to get. So we'll have hunger. Like survival will actually be hunger and water. Yeah, it's a... Oh, God. I can't imagine them putting that into No Man's Sky now. It's been out for a certain amount of time. And you got to think, okay, that's too much. We've we've got to a point. There is a uh, a type of hunger system in No Man's Sky, but it's not traditional. Like, you're not drinking water or liquids and eating food. It's just your food can actually help your life support. You know, you have a life support and you have a uh, atmosphere. You have a hazard protection. But not the same as like a water, a hunger, and a, a thirst meter. Pineapple equals core? Maybe. Maybe there's something with the core. Oh, God. Don't give them ideas now, Sean Murray's like, hey, that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> no! Oh, that's a building. That looks like a, oh, yeah, secured building. It's a manufacturing facility right there. So we're not heading towards that. I don't want to deal with those. There's definitely going to be cameras around that thing. Look at this guy over here. Hey, buddy. Look at—he looks like a little dog. Okay, he's a dog with a shell on him. Hey, buddy. Hold the anchovy, but yes, on the bacon or ham or both. Culinary zest—I—I I have. I think it was uh, yesterday. I was telling you guys I had a ham and bacon pizza. Oh, so good. So freaking tasty. I love ham. I love bacon pizza. I love that's the only time you'll see me eating crunchy bacon because it just it just tastes good on a on a a pizza when you have it crunchy. Oh, it's so good. But yeah, it was it was a bacon and ham. Oh, good. Good stuff. Nothing. There we go. We got our oxygen. We're going to need that for our uh, our refiner later on. Bacon is best with uh, maple syrup? Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't say no to it. If I'm eating pancakes and bacon, it, it's not a bad. It's not a deal breaker. I just love you get a little bit of a chewy bacon on its own and just fold it in half and eat it. Perfect. Perfect. I got one chromatic metal. Where did I get chromatic metal from? That's weird. That's oxygen down here. And we'll do that. 
There we go. Okay, I think we're okay. We've, we've cleared out some space. There's another building over here. Man, we're running into a lot of buildings. I'm... I'm kind of... It's kind of nice. There's been... There's been some saves where we don't run into a building for like half an hour. This one's been pretty constant on buildings. I like it. All right, let's see if we can get an upgrade out of here. Deep fried bacon? Oh, that might be good, actually. I might, you know, I'm not saying that crunchy bacon is terrible. I just prefer chewy. But yeah, I mean, uh, deep fried bacon? Oh, man, I bet you might, your heart would hurt after eating that. But man, it would be good. Where's this thing? There you are. We got a hazard upgrade. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Hazard upgrade. And yeah, it's it's decent. I saw the 8% and I was like, yeah. But yeah, we got 2, 2, 8, and 4. Okay. Not ideal, but hey, it's better than nothing. I'll take something better than nothing. Let's see. What is this one over here? Oh, Midnight. Jason likes the floppy. Yeah, I had a floppy disc when I was... <laughs> what is this? A monolith! Look at this! Oh, yes. Talk about a floppy disc and all of a sudden you, know, you get some monolith. Whoa! That's where I got the chromatic metal from. Oh! The little tiny rocks give you it. Okay. The little rocks give you the chromatic metal. They only give you like one or two, so... I'm not going to make a ton of it, but hey. You destroy a whole bunch of these little tiny rocks, they'll give you a whole bunch of... It'll add up. You'll get a whole bunch of uh, ferrite or chromatic metal and ferrite dust. All right, let's see. Well, number one, let's get my... Uh, we're in a Corvac system, obviously. Bacon is like an S-class upgrade for most foods. Dude, seriously. 100%. There's very few. I'm not saying they don't exist, but there's very few foods that do worse when you put bacon with them. But man, you if you add a little bacon to anything, have a salad, put some bacon in it. Have a steak, put some bacon on it. <laughs> Pizza, put some bacon in it. Oh man. Have some water, put some bacon in it. <laughs> uh. Ah. Bacon with apple pie, I'll take that. Oh yeah. We had um we had some apple pie with uh with vanilla ice cream. Oh man, that's good. Vanilla ice cream on apple pie. I don't know what it I don't know what it is, but that combination is so freaking good. Let me get that. Let's see what we get out of there. We got a uh, Starship Shield module. See, again, you can't control what you get. I got a Shield module for my Starship. That doesn't help me at all. <laughs> that does not help me at all. Let's see if we can get an upgrade out of here. Got some more Fecium. Deep freeze bacon slushy. Ooh. Ooh. You guys are gonna make me hungry. You guys are gonna make me hungry. I did just eat some uh, lunch, so I'm not actually hungry. <laughs> They're giving me ideas for what I need to eat over the weekend. Gotta get some uh, meals going. Oh, we're going south? No, no, no. Look at that. Sentinel just over there chilling out. Apple pie a la mode. My fate, dude. Obi-Wan. Dude. I, it's so good. It's so good. I uh, made a chocolate chili ice cream. Cold but hot at the same. How do you even do that, Jester? I don't even understand. My brain doesn't know how that works. Like the same thing with fried ice cream. I don't know. My brain is like, how do you fry ice cream? That's so weird. But I know it's a thing and I've had it and it's good. But my brain, it just doesn't comprehend. Like really? Fried ice cream? Chili ice cream? 
Uh, Jason is walking in circles. No, no, no. We're good. We just walked a little bit. We just did a little bit of a backtrack just for a second. Just to verify. <laughs> no, no, no. Cargo drop. Buried cache. See around here, no buildings or unknown buildings. Uh, I have some chili honey, it's sweet and spicy, just like me. Culinary zest. There you go. My my wife loves spicy honey. She gets like the hot honey. Oh, I'm not into that. I just want my honey to be just normal. Oh god, just normal honey is good enough for me. Well, okay. I guess we're going to start to have to delete things. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, the residual goop. Yeah, we'll get rid of that for now. Let's see what we get out of here. We get nanites out of there. Yep, we got nanites out of there. 110 nanites. Okay, I'll take that. Now, remember, we're going to need, like, close to a thousand uh, nanites to even buy anything. Oh, there's a building over here. Because we're playing on extreme, all the prices for things are way more expensive than usual. So, oh, that is an unknown build or uh, an abandoned building. That is an abandoned building. Don't need that. Up there, up there. Metal plating. Okay, we need to start refining some stuff here. All right, so the ionized cobalt, we can refine that into regular cobalt. That way we could, you know, we have a stack of that. We can make some batteries out of that. Dun, dun, dun. All right, we're going to keep that because we got to sell some of that. Do, 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 do. Okay. It's a hot and spicy uh, cocoa shot. Oh, really? That's crazy. All right, we can... Um... Can I refine this back into carbon? <laughs> I don't think I can. Nope. Dang it, I wish I could. That'd be good. That would be awesome. That would help out a ton. <laughs> they made one additional one. I didn't even mean to. I gotta chuck that away. And turn that into Mordite? I can, but you don't want to though. Alrighty. That goes down here. Oh! I gotta get my uh my metal plating, my rusted metal, turn that into ferrite dust. We'll get a little closer to the abandoned building. So I can get the eggs from around the abandoned building and turn those into nanites. So speaking of, it's going to cost you more. You can do that. Get some more carbon. But um, <laughs> gunboat. Uh, I like candy for dessert. That's why I uh, eat supper. I go to the corner store where she. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is deserving of that. <laughs> Terrible. Started happening yesterday on Xbox. Gato, what has happened? Anyone else getting a bug where you run out of oxygen while on land? That's a weird bug. No, I haven't gotten that one. That one's weird. That should not happen. <laughs> not at all. There we go on that. But yeah, so we can refine all of the uh, the eggs. However, you need room to, to actually get the eggs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refine my metal into ferrite dust. What else can I refine? I mean, I... 
I have to get a ship that way I can put this in there and then delete it and get the materials back. Do that. There we go. Oh, this is going to take forever. Uh, well, that's fun. Have you played Dave the Diver? If so, what do you think? Peter, I love Dave the Diver. It is one of my favorite games of the year so far. I have. We have a stream of it. If you, if you have not checked out the channel, we did, I think, a five-hour stream on the beginning of Dave the Diver, and it is a blast. I love that game. There is so much to it. Now... It is a very particular type of game. It has a lot of uh, mechanics in there, like you're catching fish during the day. You have to dive down and catch them. And then at night, you're running a sushi restaurant. So you're preparing a menu. You're running back and forth. So it's a lot of uh, maintenance kind of things, a lot of uh, processes. Instead of just running and gunning or whatever, you're actually doing a lot of different things. So some people don't like it. I love it. I think it's a really, really good game. And there's so much to it. Like, you just start out diving and getting fish to make a, you know, sushi at a restaurant. And then you start opening up, like, you get guns. You can get deeper down. There's a lot to that game. Like, it, even after, like, 10 hours, I was still unlocking new features. And I'm like, what in the world? I'm still doing new things after, like, 10 hours in this game. I have not played uh, me the diver yet. I'm currently playing Cryofall. I have not. I need to check out Cryofall, Dave, because I don't know about Cryofall. Um, there you are. Okay, so I think they stack up to three. So I get three, six, nine, twelve. Up. Oh. Uh, fifteen. We'll get rid of that 18 so we need more room for our eggs so this is the hard part i sacrifice that one over there that way they don't attack me over here now remember i cannot do anything with the abandoned building unless i've gotten rid of all the eggs on the outside and you don't need to, you don't need to collect them. You can just open up, you can destroy the eggs and you're done. However, it's more beneficial if you open them up and take out the larval core because you can make a ton of nanites doing this. And I believe on extreme, they only stack up to three in one stack. There we go. Over here for a second. Up, oh, almost full already. Good lord, we're not even through all the uh, all these eggs. No, no, no. Yes, over here. Oh, how? How? All right, now we're capped out. So we have any more eggs hanging out here? Well, we do. We got a few. I mean, we got a good amount of eggs, so I, I'm not too upset about that. We're gonna we're gonna destroy some of the other ones, and we're just gonna basically leave them. Now, those larval cores, they will go away. They time out after a certain amount of time, about 10 seconds or so. So that's kind of like we're burning it because we can't go inside until we've killed all the eggs. Oh, there's one still over here. And no more eggs. Okay, we're good. We're clear. All the eggs are d opened and they're done. So let's get in here real fast. I'm going to hide in here. And we're going to refine these eggs. And get some nanites. 
Uh, thanks for joining us in chat, everyone. Yeah, seriously, guys. Very much appreciated. That was a late uh, reaction, LOL. Yeah, I know. Have you ever heard of a game called Starfield? Uh, so, uh, is it... It's Starfield? No, I've not, I've not heard of Starfield. Um, I think it says Starfield. Starfield? Is that what you're saying? No, I've not heard of that. Is that a... I'm guessing that's like a baseball game? No, I don't play... I don't play sports games. So we don't do that... Uh, we don't do that here. I mean, you know... Not that saying the sports games are bad, but... In general, we just play space games. So we don't do uh, sports games at all. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I am joking. I am joking. <laughs> I apologize. So I'm teasing a little bit. Yes, we've heard of Starfield. I am obsessed with Starfield. So yes, I am counting down the days. I pre-ordered Starfield. I can't wait. So my favorite, one of my favorite games of all time is Oblivion, The Elder Scrolls Oblivion, which is made by Bethesda, the same people making Starfield. They make Fallout 4, they made Fallout 3, they made, uh, you know, Elder Scrolls, they made Skyrim, you probably know Skyrim. So I cannot wait to play Starfield. Uh... But yeah, I'm just teasing. I didn't mean to 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 uh, to make fun or anything like that, Suki. But yeah, I I can't wait for Starfield. I am so excited for it. We're gonna keep a stack of these. Two hundred nine thousand. That's a good amount, right? And we still have four hundred and eighty. Okay. I wish we could sell that. They won't let you sell any upgrades. Dun dun dun. Okay. Let's grab this. Love Oblivion. Dude, Richard, I love Oblivion. That was my first Bethesda game was Oblivion. And I, I went back and I played uh, Morrowind. I played, I even played a little bit of Daggerfall. I'm just, I think because I played uh, Oblivion first, I love Oblivion. I love, I played all the DLC. I got every achievement in that game when it came out for the 360. I, I love Oblivion. I, I was obsessed with Oblivion. I still am. I need to go back and play it. I haven't played it in so long. Uh, but yeah, so not seeing anyone like uh, Skyrim is super fun. I played the crap out of Skyrim. Yep, get out of there. Nope. I played the crap out of Skyrim and that came out as well. But yeah, there's just something about Oblivion that just hooked me. I love it. Sky Oblivion. Oh, dude. The 2025 Sky Oblivion is coming. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait for that, D that uh, I, I call it a DLC. It's like a mod for Skyrim. If you've not seen anything on Sky Oblivion, guys, there's tons of, they have an awesome channel. Go check out their YouTube channel. Just watch some of the behind the scenes and what they're doing with it. It looks like it's going to be, that might, if, thankfully it's coming out in 2025, because if it came out the same time as Starfield, that might actually be my most anticipated game compared to Starfield. I love Starfield and I want to play that, but Sky Oblivion is on a whole different level. Oh, look at all these uh, data structures down here. We can get some drop pod data, maybe? Made the uh, guys mad. Nope, I'm not dealing with you. Can I even can I even kill a sentinel? Ah, uh, you, you kind of. I mean, we're doing some damage. I don't have a weapon. Maybe we can get an upgrade out of him. Okay, we got room. We got room. Gonna get the other barrel. Reinforcements are arriving. Nope, I'm not dealing with you guys. You guys are ready to fight. I'm not dealing with those guys. They have armor and stuff. Nope. I will let you guys chase me way back there.
Live support! I know I need to do that real fast. Oh, God. Oop. Definitely need to do it now. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There we go. Where's my game machinery? Uh, I follow the I follow their YouTube channel for Skype Livy, and always cool to see their progress when they post. Yeah, seriously, whenever they post a progress or behind the scenes videos, whenever they do a live stream, I try to catch them. Dude, I cannot wait for Sky Oblivion. That's gonna be such an amazing game, or I call it an amazing game. It's gonna be an amazing mod for Skyrim. Just amazing. I heard there's a space game called uh, Jank Citizen. I want to get in there and play it. I have it. I bought it years ago. Like I, like they were selling a package you, uh, for Star Citizen, if you guys don't know. Star Citizen. They were selling some kind of uh, a package of you buy one ship for like 20 bucks and you can get into the game. I got it. I just have not played like really deep into the game. I need to though. I want to see what it is. Because I know like sword plays the crap out of it uh survival bob cobra if you don't know sword and cobra amazing no man's sky streamers and they do a lot of star citizen as well so old school uh no man's sky uh creators on youtube and twitch and they kind of moved over they haven't gotten away from no man's sky but they're more focused on star star citizen Star Citizen? I need to drink some liquids, you guys. <laughs> I love it in moderation. I need to get in there. I haven't played it very much at all. I think I've total over the past like two years I played it like maybe half an hour. Ah. Alright. That should have reset my tongue. No no no. All right, so we're at about... Oh, God. We're at about an hour. So we're almost about to hit an hour, you guys. And we still haven't found a ship. So, oof. I was thinking maybe it'd go faster than this. But, man, we are not lucky at all. Not today. I'm not sure Star Citizen will even release Watto. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that one, man. It doesn't feel like it will. Maybe. Maybe they'll prove everyone wrong and they're ready to go already. But I have my doubts. It's been in development for so long. And the ambition of the game is so huge that I don't know if they're ever going to be able to release it. Or when they do, it won't meet expectations. It's been in development for so long, there's no way possible. It will never meet expectations. Because everyone thinks it's going to be the best game of all time, bar none, the largest game the best game all the stuff on it because it's been in development for years um, um you could say almost decades at this point but i think it's been over 10 years at this point but yeah i still want to jump in and see let's see I, I catch a cobra stream every once in a while and i'm like man that looks really cool i need to get in here and play Oh, uh, what is it? What is that? Oh, save beacon. Dang it! Save beacon. Don't need to save. It's just a glorified uh, piggy bank. It feels like that sometimes. It's just like, dude, all these people are paying in hundreds of dollars in some instances. And I mean, it... Does it is it playable? Sure. Is it what they've said it is? Not yet. Not yet. How? Oh, jeez. I'm right next to a plant. I didn't even pay attention. You idiot. Give me your oxygen. Thank you. All right. So we got to go through here and clean up some stuff. Well, we don't need that. Mm. Don't need that. Oh, we have a weapon upgrade. There you go. If I delete it, I'll get Pugnium and Chromatic Metal. Don't need that yet, so it won't delete it until we need to. We don't need that. Oh, can always make more uh, 
You can always make more money or more uh, ammo later on. Upgrade module. What? I, I already have it. I'm good. All right. Did we open this up yet? Oh, we did not. I almost left without opening this up. Uh, I need merch with dang it on it. Yeah, I do. I need, <laughs> I need that just because I say it. Uh, a long, long, long time ago, I had merch that said uh, all day. All day. Because I kept saying that all the time. Gonna do it all day. Oh, God. There we go. And then not a vampire. Thank you for the super chat. Very much appreciated. Not a vampire. Freaking legend. Thank you so very much. And uh, not a vampire says boulders gate in two weeks. Then Starfield. Oh, dude. You know, I I'm almost mad because I mean, I want to play boulders gate, but it's coming out like right before Starfield. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't have enough time. Especially the way I play like Baldur's Gate games, when I, the way I play like Dark Souls, Elden Ring, all that kind of stuff. Any kind of deep RPG, Mass Effect, I have to really get in there. I'm going to be playing it for like 100 hours, 200 hours. I need time. <laughs> the Starfield, uh, not, not, we cannot delay Starfield. Baldur's Gate should have came out like this month in July. <laughs> they give me extra time. Gotta give me extra time to play Boulder's Gate. But yeah, I can't wait. Boulder's Gate, that is up there on my list of games I need to play. We're about to hit the real busy season for video games, you guys. I don't know if you guys play a ton of games. Some people don't. They only play like No Man's Sky or they have like that one game that they play. But if you're into, like if you play everything, then man, September, October, it is gonna get nuts. It's gonna get crazy, especially October. It feels like every game is coming out in October. Spider-Man, everything, dude. It, it's about to get crazy. It's about to get crazy. I can't wait. I'm not going to be sleeping very much. <laughs> Just playing games and streaming all day, every day. Holy what? Uh, they are really blowing through all the cells in Sky Oblivion. Dude, I can't wait. I can't wait for Sky Oblivion. And Sky Oblivion, to their credit, they're not coming out until 2025. So they're giving me a little time. It gives me a couple years to get through uh, Starfield, and then I'll play some Sky Oblivion. <laughs> but yeah, dude. It is crazy how much work they've done to that. To, like, literally move over one-to-one -one and, you know, modify and adjust things along the way. But they are making all of Oblivion in Skyrim. It is crazy. The amount of work that those people, everyone is doing, it's crazy. All of them. They're just insane people that I love. I love that about them. Going to get busy. I know, Wado. I know. I was looking at my schedule. I'm like, dude, I need to start writing down schedules for games. That way I know what's coming out which week because it's going to get nuts. I need to know what is coming out when. That way I can keep track of it. Buried technology and... Okay, so I have a hyperdrive and a shield for my ship. <laughs> that I don't have yet. Come on, game. You're you're killing me. All right, so we have 47 batteries. We are okay with batteries now. That'll just let me get rid of my cobalt. That way I can make more room. So yeah, buried technology or buried caches are awesome. However, you don't have control over what upgrades they give you. And so you can get a whole bunch of starship upgrades that you don't need. <laughs> oh, dang it. My KB is messing up in chat. Your KB? Keyboard, keyboard, keyboard. Oh, okay. It's like 85% done. Yeah, I know. They're getting there. And then, of course, they're going to they're gonna finish it off. And then they have to make sure to play test it for bugs and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, I can't wait. It's going to be so good. 2024 next year. Maybe they'll get done early. Maybe they'll get done early. We can even play some Sky Oblivion next year. That would be pretty awesome. Emerald. Well, that's great. And we could sell it for a good amount of money. Yeah, there you go. And 
No, no, no. You know, if anyone wants to land here, that way I can sell some stuff and make room in my inventory. I would appreciate it. Anybody want to land? Any traders want to land for me? Keyboard or keyboard piano. A keytar. No, keytar. Keytar. Uh, man, imagine Skype Livian with uh, perfect VR. Dude. It With VR, that would be nuts. I can't even imagine how much work you'd need to do for VR. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a developer, so I have no idea what they would have to do. But I know that Skyrim has VR in it. They have, uh, they have VR built into Skyrim, so... It's a possibility. Maybe they can use that Skyrim VR somehow to insert. Oh, thank God. We got a protection upgrade. Thank God. So now we're good. Yeah, we have it. It's a heat upgrade as well. Yes. That helps out a ton. Now we won't be blowing through so many batteries. Oh, thank God. That helps. So beautiful. Are you buried? Nope, you're not. Jettison pod. Uh, the only key KB I know is attached to a computer. No, the keytar. Come on, keytar was the coolest thing. I wanted the keytar when I was a kid. That dude. Flocka, Seagull's haircut, and Keytar. That's all you needed to be cool back in the day. Um, Let's put some uh, life support in there. Dang it! Get in here. Uh-uh, K-Bloys! KB Toys, yes. Modded Skyrim VR is so awesome. And so is No Man's Sky, but I have trouble with flying in uh, in VR. Dude, I have a PS5. My next, I think my next big investment is going to be a PSVR 2. That way I can just play some No Man's Sky in VR, get all that kind of stuff going on. I think that is where I'm going to go, just because, like, I could get a VR headset for PC. However, they cost a lot. And, I mean, they, they are... For all intents and purposes, they are more accurate, more engaging than a PSVR 2. However, they are more expensive as well. So it's a heavier investment. And I've already spent, uh, you know, my, I already bought my PS5, so I might as well have a VR headset with it, right? So yeah, that might be the next thing I do. Maybe that's what we'll use it for. The uh, My PlayStation save will only be a VR save. That would be pretty fun. And I'd have to figure out... I think I could stream VR. I'd have to look at... I, I know Steve does it. I'd have to talk to Captain Steve about it. And see how he does his streams. How he sets them up. That way I can show you guys how, how much of a fool I am. <laughs> Playing VR. Uh, you can use an Ocul Oculus too. There you go. And it, I would never ever tell you guys that... You can hack a PSVR and make it work on PC. However, I bet there's a way to do it. I would never tell you to do that. That's not right. You should not do that. Don't hack your PSVR headset and uh, use it on your PC. But there might be a way to do that. I'm just saying it might be. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, is that a buried cache? It is. Let's go see what we got in here. Just need a capture card. Oh, really? So it just feeds out from the uh, PlayStation. Okay. I didn't think they would have a feed out to your television if you had a headset on. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Well, that's good to know, Moose. Heck yeah. And the other thing with the uh, a PC headset is it takes a lot of power to run that stuff. And so... I only have one, I have a one PC setup. So I'm playing No Man's Sky on PC and streaming from the same thing. The same PC is doing both. So, 
that is something that it's like uh, if i'm trying to do vr as well as stream that might be a little too much for my pc so that's another reason to get it on uh, playstation because all that all that power is running through my playstation which is not a big deal so my playstation can you know can do all the work and then my my uh, pc will stream and that won't be a, as much of an issue No, nothing. Second PC time, bro. I know. One of these days, I will be cool if I get a, a streaming PC. One of these days. I mean, I am, I am looking at upgrading. So that would be one of the the ways to go is to just get a whole new. Because if you upgrade your CPU, your uh, your uh, your computer chip, for lack of a better term, your CPU. You're going to need a new motherboard because I'm going from a 10 series. I, I have an i9 10900K. So if I buy any modern uh, any modern Intel card or even an AMD, I'm going to need a new motherboard anyway. And at that point, you might as well just buy a new PC. Just get a whole new setup because you're basically buying all the parts anyway. You're basically like 70% there. Oh, that's a resource depot. That's not going to help me. Look at this guy right here. I feel bad when they're floating in the air, so I will dig a hole in the ground and pretend like I got it out of the ground. All right. Ah, uh, damn, I have a 90, 9900K. Yeah, dude. I mean, it, it sounds stupid, but I mean, and it's not even that old. Like, if you have a 10900K or a 9900K, it's still a powerful P, uh, CPU. However... When you start doing insane stuff like streaming and recording and video editing, more modern uh, CPUs and GPUs work better. So it's not like it's unplayable. Like, oh, you have a 10900K, that's trash. No, not at all. But it's always nice to have the more modern stuff, especially for like a, a GPU, a graphics card. Crap. And we'll get rid of that. What am I going to get out of there? A water protection module. That's what I was afraid of. I was going to get first, but hey, I got it second. That's fine. <laughs> Underwater protection module. Great. On a volcano planet that probably does not have any water at all. Yes. Give me a water protection module. I have seen some good systems for about 1500 bucks. Yeah, dude, you could get a really decent, you know, good PC for thousand dollars you know like what you would consider like a heavy gaming pc thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars which is a lot of money but you got to think that thing's gonna last you a while now remember get that ram make sure because all of a sudden games are using up a lot more ram so before they would tell you oh eight gigabytes is good enough you might want to get 16 just to be safe or 32 just to be safe because we've had a, i think Last of Us on PC takes 32. I think Forspoken took 32 gigs of RAM. Um, there's another game. More, you know, more and more often. I think uh, Ratchet and Clank, uh, they are taking uh, 32 gigs of RAM. So more and more often, games are using more and more RAM. So you might want to make sure you get enough RAM. Uh, Spade says I'm running 48 gigs of RAM. I have 64. Why do you, how do you have 48? That's a weird number. How do you have 48? I have 64 because I use a uh, 16 gig uh, sticks. So I got four 16 gig sticks. How do you have 48? That's really weird. That's an odd number. Usually it's like 16, 32, something like that. You have 48? Um, oh, there's a thing over here. Do I have room in my inventory? I do. I got one little slot open. Uh, Last of Us took 32 gigs of RAM? What the? Dude. There are some things I look at. I'm like, why? Why do you need 32 gigs of RAM to run this thing? And it's because they're not optimizing these games. They're not. Because magically, like, I will take the, uh, the, um, uh, Gotham City... As a reference point, 
Gotham City, the game came out last year. Everyone talked about how it was locked to 30 frames a second, even on PC. And everyone's like, why? Why is it 32? Or why is it 30 frames a second no matter what? Even if you unlocked it and tried to force it up, it would get to like 40 or 50 sometimes. But it would be a lot of up and down, up and down. Well, come to find out, like six months later, they just put out a patch and now it's beautifully 60 frames a second. It's because they're not optimizing this damn stuff. They're just like, ah, it's good enough, ship it. And it's like, no, <laughs> if it doesn't run, then maybe you shouldn't ship it. The same thing happened with The Last of Us. It came out, it needed 30, I think it was 32 gigs of RAM, and the graphics looked like crap. All the textures looked like crap. <laughs> Well, come to find out there was some weird bug because they didn't optimize it and it wasn't actually producing the higher res textures. These guys, they just don't care. At, at this point in time, they don't care about PC as much. PC is an afterthought. It was, it's basically, hey, just get it to run on PC and we'll fix it later. And that's, to me, that feels like a really bad uh, mantra to run by, to have. Just make sure it runs good enough, and we'll fix it later. That's kind of a crappy way to do things. But people keep buying the games. Mark! Thank you so much for the super chat scene. Wait on getting a headset until Starfield VR drops, dude. I know. I know. Well... <laughs> never mind. I'm not going to say that. Not going to say that, Mark, but... I will say that if I get a headset for my PlayStation, it might work by the time I get it. It might work on a PC. It might work on PC. I'd have to look into it. I'm going to I'm going to wait until uh, Sony officially states something. I have no idea. I have no idea. But yeah, I mean I don't see, I don't, I can't see Microsoft releasing a VR headset anytime soon or a, an augmented reality headset. I think they, they dabbled with it and then they gave up. They're like, nah, it's not worth it. So I don't see Microsoft doing anything like that. I don't think there's ever going to be like an Xbox VR headset. I think they kind of thought about it and said, no, not a lot of people there. Not a lot of games. It costs extra to do so. Well, we'll just... We'll, we'll let it, if it's VR, we'll just let it happen on Steam, on, on PC. That's fine. You can do it on Steam. You go do it on PC. That's good. Uh, Spade says, I bought the 216 first, then bought the 218s a couple weeks later. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Spades, don't mix up your RAMs like that, dude. Don't do it. Don't do it. When you mix RAM like that, it doesn't work very well. So you don't want to do that. I mean, I mean, obviously it's working, but it might not be working as well as it could when you mix the uh, when you mix your rams. Ancient ruins. Oh yeah, we'll get there. How long is that? Seventeen minutes. Okay, that's not bad. That's actually realistic. I thought it was seven hours, not seventeen minutes. Hey, I'm not I'm not doing anything. Leave me alone, Sentinel. You can. But don't. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to. It's possible, sure. But your RAM might not be running as optimally as if you had the two of your... Two of the same sticks. Like, generally, when you... Oh, my God. I don't have enough ferrite dust. Generally, when you buy RAM, they tell you to buy the exact same. So just double up on whatever you have. And sure, you can plug in different RAM, and it will run... But it's not going to run as best as it could run. So if I remember right, with RAM, it only it sets RAM to the speed of the slowest stick. So if you bought a really good one and a really bad one, they will both run at that bad speed. Because it can't force the bad one to run faster. It's just not possible. But it can limit your better one down so it will ramp down your ram so you, that's why in general you don't want to buy two different kinds or two different sizes or because they might have different speeds on them oh yeah i don't have any uh, i don't have a jetpack i keep trying to do my jetpack jump can't do it
Anyway, but I mean, it, it runs. I mean, obviously it's working for you, so don't, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it, but it might not be running the best. Uh, Ancap says it's the uh, chicken eggs uh, scenario. The reason why no VR for Xbox is that there's no games for it. There is no games for it, as that's why there's no VR. Uh, that's true to a certain point, but I mean, I think well, you're seeing the same thing coming from uh, from PlayStation right now. PSVR 2 came out in February. Have you heard of any other games come out for it? So, yeah, we know that there's a, you know, No Man's Skies out there. I think we saw a couple of games coming out for the PSVR 2. But, I mean, it's not a huge system seller. It's not like... I, I, would, I would love to know how many VR headsets they've sold. I bet you it's around a million, maybe. Maybe, maybe a couple million. They're selling way more than that on PlayStation 5 consoles. So they're not selling a VR headset for every PlayStation 5. Not even half. Not even a quarter of it. So it's a very small market. And I'm not saying that one or two million is not, you know, a lot. But compared to like 50 or 60 million PlayStations, not a lot. And so if I'm a developer, if I'm, if I'm Jason Game Maker, and they say, hey, would you like to make a VR headset? We have a... Uh, or would you like to make a VR game? I would say, well, how many how many uh, people do you have with VR headsets? Oh, we have 800,000. I'm like, I can make a VR game for 800,000 people, or I can make a PlayStation 5 game for 50 million people. I think I'll go with the 50 million people. Google says 600,000. Oof. I thought it was more than that. Ooh, I thought they had, I thought they hit at least a million. Maybe. Oof. That's worse than I thought. And I mean, again, not saying that is terrible, but when you're trying to make money selling games, you want to hit the biggest market. That's why a lot of uh, like third party uh, games, they are everywhere. You're, you're selling it on PlayStation. You're selling it on Xbox. You're selling it on Steam, PC. You're selling it on, on Switch. And you're doing the bare bones minimum just to get it to work. In the case of Steam and PC, <laughs> you're like, hey, we made this game for PlayStation, but we can probably get it working on PC. It's not going to work very well, but it'll run. Okay, do it. <laughs> because that's an extra million people we can sell to or whatever. Hey, Sith. Sithgasm, hello. Uh, do both. Yeah, that ideally, yes. And if I'm Bethesda, yes, I would do that. If I'm a big gaming company, 100%. But if I'm just Jason developer and I don't have very much money, oh man, there's a building. And I have to prioritize like, look, I don't have the extra time, effort, money, people to make a VR version because it takes extra time. It's going to take money. I can't do that. I don't have the people. I don't have anybody. I didn't hire anybody that works on VR. So I would have to go out. I would have to hire a team. I would have to give them another year to kind of uh, fix it, make sure it runs. I don't have, I can't do that as a small developer. Yeah, if I'm Bethesda, if I'm Microsoft, sure. But then Microsoft, they're looking at it going, okay, we can do this. We have all these developers, we're good to go. We'll have Bethesda make Starfield in VR. How many copies will it sell? 600,000 copies? How much money is it gonna take to make that? Probably more than that, because we're gonna have to get a develop. We're gonna have to get a dedicated team just to make the VR version. No, not worth it. No Man's Sky, they did it, and it made they made it worth it. So there's an argument there. I just don't know if it's compel. That rock just moved. I don't know if it's compelling enough. I really don't. We are so stocked full of stuff right now. 9,022. I don't think we're going to get any more emerald, so we can probably get rid of that. Sodium? Do we not have sodium? Oh. Cannot use it there. Uh, anyway, it's, it, when it comes down to, especially with these larger companies... 
they're looking for a return on investment and not just like hey if you make a vr version well you know you can ultimately you'll make like a hundred bucks off of it they're like okay we could and we'd make money technically but no 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 we want to make a lot of money off of this stuff they don't want to invest in something to get a little tiny bit of money they want a lot and so playstation they're they did their vr headset i'm sure they're doing their VR headset because they're like, hey, look, we can corner the market because no one else is doing that. You can get a Valve Index. You can get an HTC Vive. You can get, a, you know, there are these other headsets, but I don't know. 600,000, is that worth it? Is that enough? I don't know. Even if, you know, you go to the end of the year, do they sell a million, a million headsets? Is a million headsets worth it? I don't know. Maybe it is to Sony. I have no idea. It doesn't seem like it would be. Usually, I mean, you would think if it was a lot, they'd be out there touting it like, yeah, we're selling so many headsets, it's crazy. I haven't heard them talk about uh, the PSVR 2 at all. They're very mum about that. I can't see anything. It's too dark. It's too dark. Anyway, anyway. I would always love to get a VR headset, and I think it would be a really, really cool experience. So that is definitely on my list of things to do. However, I don't, I don't foresee a lot of games coming to VR unless Sony's paying for them. I, maybe Sony's out there saying, hey, look, put your game in VR. We'll give you whatever, you know, because we need VR games. <laughs> we need them. We have no other VR games. We need you to, we need more VR games, so we'll pay you to do it. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Get the Apple AR headset. Dude, Sith, I wish I could afford it. Is it a thing like $3,000? <laughs> that to me, they had the Facebook, the, what was it? The Meta, Meta headset that was like $2,000. And now we have an Apple headset that is like $3,000. I don't know who they're selling these headsets to, but it's not me. Not anybody I know. You can get a car for that amount of money. Good lord. Two or three thousand dollars? Goodness. And it's just for the headset. That's not the PC that powers it. That's not anything else. That's just for the headset itself. Crazy. Um, We'll get rid of this. And we'll make some more. Oh, God. Dang it. I need life support shells. There. There we go. So let's see, grab this. What do we get? Life support module. I'll take that. There we go. Okay. We're heading north. Yes, we are. Okay. I'm getting distracted. I'm getting distracted. Apple uh, caters to elite skill groups, devs, artists, college programs. I know, but I mean, unless that headset is doing something I just don't understand. I get that it's probably a really quality headset, but there is a uh, there is a, a, a drop off point of, you know, like, for instance, if I'm a developer and if I'm a um, I'm a delivery driver. It, I need to have a vehicle. I absolutely need to have a vehicle. And so I don't want the cheapest car out there because I want it to be sturdy. I want it to run correctly. I want it to be pretty fast. I don't want some like a Geo Metro from 1992. I want a good solid car that's fast enough because the faster I go, the more deliveries I can make. However, the difference between getting like a, uh, you know, a Honda Civic versus a Lamborghini. <laughs> yes, a Lamborghini is cooler. It is faster. What? No, a, a Honda Civic is just fine. <laughs> and how many businesses, how many developers are going to say, look, you can get the Apple headset for $3,000, but you can get the Meta Quest for 2000 Or we can get the regular Quest for like 500 and that works just fine. <laughs> We could get the PlayStation one and have that one work. What are you doing for $3,000? 
And that's, to me, that's where it falls. It's like, okay, I mean, yes. It's a status symbol. It's, hey, look, I have the Apple headset. And it does all these cool things, and that's awesome. But how many of those cool things are you going to use a year from now? Are you serious? Don't break my... Oh. Can I fix it? <laughs> nope. No! Okay, can I break this one and get one? I, I can. Okay. So we need sodium nitrates. Sodium, where are you? There's some over here. Uh, Ognum says, hello, Jason, and hello, chat. Hello, Ognum. Thank you so much for hanging out. And everyone in the, in the, uh, in the chat, thank you guys so very much for hitting that like button. Seriously, man. All of you guys. We have 258 likes. Thank you guys so much. Seriously. Very much appreciated. Everybody. And so, yeah, we got off on a tangent on VR headsets. I don't know why we went there. I would just, I'm losing my mind, I guess. Just going crazy. Oh, yeah, we were talking about PlayStation VR. And Starfield and playing VR. I mean, I definitely want to get a VR headset. I want to get a good one. I don't need not getting the, the Apple one. I'm not spending that much money. I refuse. If Microsoft sold a $3,000 headset, I'd say no, no, no. If they sold a $3,000 Starfield VR headset for Windows, I still wouldn't buy that thing. That's too much. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Uh... There we go. Nope, nope, nope. There we go. You get, uh, you get wander fever. I do. I do. <laughs> I just, I want to talk about everything. I just start talking. Yahoo Serious was a uh, show on uh, MTV in the 80s. Yahoo? I don't remember Yahoo. I don't remember that at all. I was trying to, I'm trying to think of, you know, you have, well, that was VH1, pop-up video. Um, that was VH1, though. That wasn't MTV. What did MTV have? They didn't have pop-up video. They had something else. What the heck was that called? They had behind the music, but that wasn't the same thing. Um, my brain's not working. My brain is not working. Ask Louis uh, Rossman about Apple quality. Well, that's true, too. That is true, too. I mean, uh, for me personally, I don't care as long as the thing works and it's priced reasonably. You know, yes. Would I love to have a Lamborghini? Of course I would love to have a Lamborghini. Am I going to buy a Lamborghini? No. <laughs> I can't afford it, number one. But number two, anything breaks on that thing, it's going to cost a thousand million kajillion dollars to fix it. I don't got that time. Even if I had the money to uh, buy a Lamborghini, I don't have the money to maintain a Lamborghini. I don't have the money to fix a Lamborghini. <laughs> and that's the part you don't think about. You don't think about that. I, I, I'll tell you, when I, when, I turned, uh, when I turned 16, I got a 1986 Audi 5000S. It is a German car. It is a really, really beautiful car. The problem is it's a German car. So all the pieces for that thing came out of Europe. When I had to get an air, air filter, I had to literally order an air filter because it was sized and the shape of it, no air filter in the United States would fit in it. I had to literally order an air filter for that car. It was the worst. So you don't think about it until all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah, I have to do maintenance on this thing. And every part is a million dollars because it's not American. It's literally custom, basically custom parts because I had to order it from Europe. I love that car, but dang, that thing was so expensive. It was, and it, it worked. That thing was a beast. I love that car. I had, it, it was a straight six. So, at six uh, uh, spark plugs in it. It ran on four. I had two that were just gone, blown out, broken. It still ran, and I was just like, it kind of feels like it's you know, underpowered or whatever. They checked the spark plugs, and they're like, dude, you had four. <laughs> you had four! It, that thing was a beast. It would run no matter what. But it was such a pain 
to maintain that thing. Uh, buy a Prius, great on gas. Well, that's yeah, there you go. But I bet you it's really expensive to fix those things too. Do do do. But yeah, I love the the Audi. It was a really amazing car. It's just anything went wrong with it. It I, dude, I couldn't figure it out. You take it to a shop and they're like, we don't know what the heck. no. I can't fix this thing. <laughs> there is some weird stuff. The brakes were just, it was the worst car in the world to fix. There's a car, there's a building over here. Jason said, I'm an Audi of 5,000 and Audi and Audi. Every time he left the place, I bet. <laughs> I'm Audi 5,000. Yes. I'm Audi 5,000. Exactly. Audi. I'm Audi 5,000. Uh, oh, good question. Tony Lynn. I got the uh, 512 gigabyte version. Oh, wait a minute. Tony Lynn said... Uh, I missed that question. Were you guys talking about the, uh, the Steam Deck? Is that what you're talking about? I've been considering getting a Steam Deck. That is a building. I've been considering getting a Steam Deck, but I mean, it, at the same time... Well, I, I should say, I'm more considering a Steam Deck now because the Asus uh, ROG, that thing, I've heard nothing but bad stories about the Asus uh, ROG, the handheld. I've heard nothing but bad things about that thing. Overheating, ejecting the SD cards, melting SD cards, having problems with the screens. I was like, maybe, maybe I'm going to skip that thing because I was, I was thinking, oh yeah, that'll be good. It has more power to it. And that's the other bad part is that it's so powerful, it just drains your battery. So if you actually want to use it mobile, like if you want to take it on a trip, your battery is going to be draining so fast because that screen is beautiful. It has more power to it, but that also takes more battery. Anyway. Uh, this is why I stick to tube shuttles. Minimal maintenance cost, dude. I wish I lived in, a, in a, an area where I didn't need to have a vehicle. That would... Because uh, my wife, we talk about it all the time. We're like, dude, we got to pay for insurance. You got to pay for gas. You got to maintain your vehicle. It costs so much to have a vehicle in the United States. It's crazy. If I lived in a, if I lived in a city that you can just jump in a, jump on the tube or jump in the subway and go, that might be the way to go. Uh, so uh, hydroelectric Toyotas, are you on board? Dude, I would do a hydroelectric Toyota. No problem. I would do that. Uh, hydrogen. I've, um, I think they have hydrogen cars, right? I'll take a hydrogen car in a second. Just fill it up with water <laughs> or hydrogen, technically. <laughs> when we get to water-based cars, I'm going to be excited. Just pour in some water and you're good. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Mark! Thank you for the super chat. Oh, uh, what don't you want to buy? Says Mrs. Jason. Yes, <laughs> exactly. What don't you want to buy? Uh, I wish one of these days when we're pew when I'm PewDiePie rich, that'll be so awesome. But we're not there yet. <laughs> uh, 71 to 75 Dodge Dart uh, Slant 6 Indestruct. Dude, older vehicles. There was a certain period in time where vehicles they made vehicles to where they were just indestructible you could do whatever and it would run it wouldn't run well but it would run like my audi my audi didn't run perfectly but every time i turned that key it would turn on it would turn over every time it did not the heater died in it it literally did not have any heat and in colorado that's terrible but it would run it, it only had four spark plugs it would run I had my, uh, because it was, uh, shipped over from Germany, it was in a big container, so the bottom was rusted out. My muffler fell off. It ran. No problem. My stick, it was a stick shift. My stick, the, uh, the actual stick socket rotted out, and so the stick came out. It was still running. It was, that thing, you could do anything to that thing, and it would still run. It was terrible. You know, it would, it would fall apart, but it would run. <laughs> You know, so it would get you there. It just didn't get you there in style. Oh, Ogden Games. I remember those. Uh, Dodge Dart is immortal. Yes. 
Yeah, but when we run out of water, you won't be able to afford That's true. Well, I'll be, out I'll be outside with a bucket just getting all the rain. Especially this year, dudes. Oh, I don't know if you guys, any of you guys are in Colorado, but man, we've gotten more rain this year than I can remember in a long time. Every, every like decade or two, there, for whatever reason, we will have the rainiest summer of all time in Colorado. So like, I, I don't know if we've broken a record or what, but man, it feels like it is raining at least once a week in Colorado. It's been getting warmer, you know, don't get me wrong, but I mean like all of May, most of June, it was raining every day. It was crazy. It's raining. It rained yesterday. It rained the day before. It's probably going to rain today in Colorado. It's crazy. That is not normal. That is not normal at all. It is insane. And I love it. It is my favorite. I love the rain. So the fact that we're getting a ton of it, I'm, I'll take it. Uh, Ford F-150, immortal, unkillable trucks. Dude, Toyotas. I've heard Toyotas, same thing. You get a Tacoma from like 1994. That thing is uh, indestructible. Oh, nice. This is the first run today. Yes, K-Bar it is. We are doing an extreme outlaw run. And so we've been going all day. I thought for sure we might be able to uh, get a ship within the first hour. I was hopeful. Maybe a little too hopeful because now we're almost on. Uh, we're at an hour and a half. No ships yet. Hour and a half, dude. Holy cow. I just realized that. Oh, basically almost two hours at this point. But we got it. We got it. This is a uh, building. Oh, no. It's a beacon. It's a tower. So we don't need that. Uh, Rakdos Rover says... This has been a record year for rain over here in Dead. Dude, seriously, it's a record in down in Colorado Springs. Same thing. We are just... I've not heard as many flood warnings as I have this year. Period. Every... It feels like it's all the time is a flood warning. Flood warning. Flood warning. Because there's so much rain coming down. It's just crazy. It's nice. I don't have to water my yard as much. I'm out there cutting it all the time. Because the grass is growing like crazy. But I don't have to... Is that inside the mountain? Is it inside? I don't have to uh, water it as much, but I'm always, every week, I'm out there cutting it. Uh, Sithgasm says it rained almost every day for two weeks for a few months in Nevada. Felt like Portland or something. Dude, I can't even imagine. Yeah, Nevada? It's been weird. Yeah, we've had a lot of rain. It's really cool. And I, I was telling my wife, I said, look, if they complain about a drought, I will... I will call them a liar because we've never gotten this much rain. There's no way we're in a drought still. Yeah, this is in the mountain. What is this? Can I even get down in there? I don't think I can. Yeah, I can't get in there. Don't be a ship. Because <laughs> I can't get to you. Seriously. What is this? I bet you it is. It's a, it's a crashed exotic, and I'm not gonna be able to get to it because you know it's in the it's in the volcano. Uh, Joe. Volcano sacrifice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Tech Center says my car is a '99 Honda Odyssey and it's got half a million miles on it. Still runs like a champ, dude. There are some amazing cars out there. There are some amazing ones. And then there's some not so amazing ones that like fall apart just terribly. Oh, there's another building over here. Is it in the mountain? Uh, it's the bat cave, basically. It is. It's just, it's the Batmobile was in there. Uh, an El Nino year? Probably. I don't even know. I haven't been paying attention. I just know that it's been raining like crazy. Really? That's another beacon? I think. Yeah, it's a beacon. That's a tower. All right. So not that one. Don't need that one. Any of you guys want to land for me so I can sell some stuff and make clear out my inventory? That would help out a ton.
How far are we away from our, uh... Over an hour, okay. Yeah, it is an El Nino year. Yeah, it would make sense. We got a lot of rain going on, at least here. Yeah, it's a, uh, ad kind of chat. Okay. Oh, uh, boom, boom, boom. Bacon! Dude. I should. I have a... I have some soup I can drink. It's probably not warm anymore. I put it in my mug. It's definitely not warm anymore. Ah! Cooking bacon right now. Oh, Elden! Man. I need some bacon. Maybe I'll have some bacon and eggs tomorrow morning for breakfast. That's what I'll do. Ah! Okay, you did it! Gonna make bacon. Yep, gotta do it. Gotta have some bacon. It's Friday! Gotta relax, you know? Uh, for the most part, some people work on the weekend, which sucks. I get it. I did for... Oh, God. Well, how many years did I work on weekends? I did, um... For 20 years, I worked on the weekend. I worked on... Uh, when I worked at Walmart, I did overnights, and I worked on the weekend, so... Uh, my days off were uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then I worked at the radio station. And when they first get you in on the radio station, I worked at Sears as well. But when you uh, when you first get in on a radio station, they make you... They torture you, basically, to make you earn it. So you work overnights. And you work weekends, of course. But then I started... When I got into producing, when I was uh, working the boards and stuff... I was still doing weekend shows, so we would have live shows that would happen on Saturday and Sunday. And when you do, when you have a live show, you need a body in the building. So of course, I would have to be in there. I would only be in there for like two or three hours, so it's not a big deal. But it kind of sucked. I'd have to go to work for two or three, four hours probably, more than likely, on Saturday and four hours on Sunday. So yeah, I did a lot of working on the weekends. So, and for most of my life, I worked every holiday as well. When you work in retail, you don't get holidays off. <laughs> so, I worked every uh, Thanksgiving and uh, the Black Friday sales after Thanksgiving for like 15 years. That sucked. No buildings. Jason, I'll take your rain here in Louisiana. I, I bet. I bet, dude. You guys, it's probably hot and humid. Oh. I wouldn't want to see. And that's the other thing is, like, I can tell the temperature. I have a, I have a little, like, a meter that tells me the temperature and the, uh... Oh, it's backwards. Okay. Temperature and the humidity. If it goes up, if it gets above 50, like, it's 51 right now. 51% humidity in Colorado is high. Usually it sits around 10 to 20. That's a normal day in uh, in Colorado, which is dry. It's dry. But when it's 50, you know, okay, because it's rained the last couple of days. And so it rains in the afternoon. And then the following day in the morning, the sun comes out. It evaporates all that rain. It gets very humid. And then it rains again that afternoon. But it's just constant. Oof. I can't imagine. Humidity and heat. No. I don't want that. Weather on the sevens. Exactly, Mark. We did weather on the sevens. We did traffic and weather on the sevens. Uh, the average temp for July in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Is, oh, dude, I, I had family that lived in Las Cruces. I would never want to go down there. It's too hot, man. It's way too hot. I'm a cold weather person. If it's snowing and raining every day, I am happy. I need cold, cold weather. That's why I got to move to, like, the North Pole or Antarctica or something like that. But they don't have good internet down there, so, eh. I, it's a big trade-off. I want internet. You know, you got to have internet when you're in those kind of places. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, but it's a dry heat. Well, that is true. It is a dry heat. 
So when it's dry heat, yeah. Like normally in Colorado, the hottest month of the year is July and it's always dry. Like we get a lot of rain in like May and maybe a little bit in June. By the time July hits, it's all dry. And that's when it gets really, really hot. Like the end of July, like right now, normally we would be 90, 100 degrees Fahrenheit every day. And it would just be dry, like high heat, low humidity. And so it's basically just don't go outside. You'll die. <laughs> just stay inside and survive. Or if you have to go outside, drink a lot of water because you're it's so dry. You will you will overheat. You will you will die. <laughs> but this year, it's not that hot. I mean, we've gotten up to 90 a couple times, but it's been in the 80s and it's been rainy. So I like it. I'll take it. Humidity is 11% in Nevada. Yep, dude. Yep. That's normally what it is here. Like, I have my little meter, and on average, you go between 10 and 20%. And that's normal. You know, when it gets above 20, you're like, oh, it might rain. Because it's, the humidity is pretty high. <laughs> when it's 50, you know it rained, like, hot, like the last couple days it's been raining, so it's really humid. And, you know, 50 is really humid. I know that. There are some places they get up to 80. Oh my God, I can't even imagine. 80 degree or 80% humidity? Nope. How do you breathe with that much water in the air? <laughs> uh, culinary Zest says, and Jason Blaze knows death. I do. I am a professional. <laughs> I am a professional. <laughs> At least in video game death. Uh because everyone else dies around me. I don't die. I've never died ever in a video game. Ever. <laughs> uh, April says 102 currently in the Dallas area with 34% humidity. Coolance has been in a week. <laughs> it's a nice break. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, that's why I'm in Colorado and I don't want to go any farther south. It just gets hotter from here. I want to go north. <laughs> I want to go into the colder part. I want to go higher. I want to go into the northern part where it's all cold. I need to, you know, I need to go to Alaska or Canada or something like that. I'll bunk with uh, Heather. We'll move in with Heather in the cold area. He Heather, do you live in the cold area of, Col of Canada? Has to be cold, right? In my mind, I mean, it's probably not true, but in my mind, it just snows all the time in Canada. So it's just cold all the time, constantly, right? <laughs> That's how it works, right? It's just snow, constant. Um, Kevin says, hey, Jason, does your wife stream or uh, ever come on cam? Uh, not officially. I think she's come on a couple times. Like, she's been in the background. Like, she's gone back. Because in my, in my office, I have, I have, like, a fridge set up over here. And I have some movies set up. And so if she needs to get something... She'll walk in, but for the most part, she doesn't like being on camera. She's just like, nope, don't want to be on camera. I'm like, okay. Just like, or just like Charlie. I try to ask Charlie to come in here. She doesn't want to come in here either. Nobody wants to be on camera with me, I guess. They, will, they don't want to be seen with me. But yeah, my wife does not stream. She doesn't play video games or any of that kind of stuff. She's not a big video game person. We do, we do movies. Should we, we have other stuff we do. But yeah, she doesn't do video games, and she doesn't do streams or anything like that. Uh, 25C and 76% humidity. What? 76? Here in Halva uh, Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia. Okay, and up in Canada. Okay. That's high humidity. Are you next to the ocean? What the heck? Eldon, are you next to the uh, coast? 76 is pretty dang high. You gotta be near some water, right? Oh, crap. Too much inventory. Oh, did it just cancel it out? Oh! Hopefully that wasn't an upgrade. <laughs> Dang it. They just canceled it out. It just said, oh, yeah, never mind. You don't need it. Uh, in Dubai, we hit 80% at 100 and... Tillin. That is too much. That is way too much. 
80% humidity and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If it gets above 90 degrees, I get grouchy. I don't like anything above 90. 120? No, no, sir. Nope, nope, nope. Not even a little bit. Holy mackerel. Just being in the shade when it's 90 would feel amazing. <laughs> Uh, still no ship. Nope, no ship, and we're at, uh, oh, basically two hours now. We're at almost, we're basically at two hours with no ship at all. Dang it! Uh, my igloo is melting a little bit in this summer, in the summertime. I would, that would be really cool. <laughs> no pun intended. That would be really cool to have an igloo. <laughs> Just live in the snow. Oh, that'd be awesome. You would, uh, you would die here in South Georgia, dude. Yeah, I know. It's too humid. Too hot, too humid. I need snow. I need cold temperatures constantly. My, uh, my wife makes fun of me because she, she likes it like... <laughs> when she says she's a uh, cold person, she means, oh, she likes the temperature around like 60. That's still kind of warm for me. I want my temperature to constantly be between... 40 degrees Fahrenheit and like 55. 55 is like the hottest. I want it to be 40 all the time. That's like the perfect temperature. Not too cold, not too hot. Once you get down below like 10 degrees, like the, in the winter time in Colorado, we'll, there'll be some nights where it gets down to like zero or below zero. Okay, that's when it gets cold. That's when you're like, okay, it's getting kind of cold. If it sits around 30 and 40 degrees, I'll take that every day of the week. I love that. That's perfect temperature. But yeah, my wife says, oh, I like the cold too. Like when it's 60, I'm like that's not cold. No, that's not cold. <laughs> that is not cold. That's kind of, that's the beginning of cold. <laughs> that is the edge of cold. Uh, my spare room, Jason. Yes. Hey, I'll do it. If it, you have all the snow over there, Heather, you're in Canada. That's where all the snow is kept, right? Like uh, Canada every year for the winter time, you guys go outside and throw snow up in the air. And that's how we get snow everywhere else on the planet, right? Because <laughs> Canada keeps all the snow. Uh, see the whole truth says Jason likes his ice in his glass at least all day. Yeah, dude. I... I, I'm drinking uh, cold stuff all the time. I mean, my uh, my office is at 72 constantly, and I wish it was colder. <laughs> the one problem I have is that my office, because it's an office, we're like, okay, we want to put you in a, a room. You, you need an area to do your YouTube stuff. Okay. But... You're not going to be in there constantly. That's a lie. And you can leave. You know, it's not going to be like a living area. So it could be the hottest room in the house. And so I have a two-story house. I'm in the second floor. I'm on the side with all the sun. <laughs> so basically, if I don't have an air conditioner running in this office, it gets up to 98 in here. I've, I literally have... I bought a thermo... I bought... I literally bought this because I was like, dang, it's hot in here. It feels really hot. It gets 98 on a, on a full summer day with, you know, with the sun out, no clouds, it will be 98 in here. And so I'm like, okay, I need an air conditioner right now. So I don't die. So that's why I have an air conditioning running, an air conditioner, an AC running constantly. And it keeps it at about 70. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. You know, I wish it got it down to like 60 or 50, but it can't. It can't keep it that cold. It's fighting that 90 degrees. Silva says, is this the new expedition? I wish it is not. We are doing a uh, like a role playing game mode where we're doing extreme and we're pretending like we're a fugitive. The rules are down below in the description if you want details. However, as a general, like, uh, just to kind of explain it a little bit, we are playing on the most extreme difficulty. We set all the difficulty sliders to the, the highest, the most difficult. 
and we're starting a brand new save and we are pretending like we're a fugitive on the run so you want to stay off the grid you don't want to go you can't go to any space stations they'll catch you there because you're a fugitive running from the the authorities you can't talk to any aliens that are not like pirates because pirates they're uh you know they're outlaws as well so they won't rat you out uh, but you can't talk to any normal aliens because they will tell the authorities where you're at. And all we're trying to do is get out of this galaxy. Once we get out of the galaxy, we are safe. And so we have to reach the center of the galaxy to leave. Which is really, really difficult. And we started a brand new save and we are ignoring our starting ship because it's been bugged. The authorities are looking for that one. We ditched our ship. We can't use it because the authorities are going to find us in it. So we have to find a brand new one. Either we have to buy one from a pirate, an outlaw, or we have to find a broken one and fix it. Uh, Canada is hot. Uh, is now hot. Thunderstorms predicted every day, but never happened. Curtistic, that's how it is in Colorado as well. Like, in general... Uh, Colorado will be hot in the morning. So you're talking, the sun will come out by about 10 o'clock in the morning. It gets really hot. And then you'll see clouds move in at about 2 or 3 in the afternoon. And we will have thunderstorms at about 4 or 5. And it'll, you know, it'll rain a good amount. Usually. Now, the weathermen, the weather people will say, Oh yeah, th thunderstorms happening this afternoon. And about half the time, nothing happens. Oh yeah, don't worry. Severe thunderstorm warning is in effect. And then you're like, where? <laughs> Not here. Not in this part of Colorado. <laughs> uh, there's been a couple days where they, you know, we had the warnings. Hey, flash flood, severe weather alert. Get inside your house, be safe. And I'm outside like, where? I don't even see a cloud. <laughs> there's not even a cloud in the sky. The Fugitive 2023, exactly. I wish I was as cool as Harrison Ford. Um, don't need that. I guess we gotta throw you in there. There we go. I might have to start getting rid of some of this stuff. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm not seeing any freaking crashed ships, you guys. And no one's landing for me either. That's the problem. Where's this guy at? Is that a buried technology or buried uh, cache? Yes, it is. Let's see. Maybe we can get an upgrade out of here. Oh, my God. Is it way down here? Is it under the... Uh, it is... Oh, well, I can still grab it. Okay. And... <laughs> I got three upgrades for a ship I don't even have yet. I have a pulse engine upgrade. I have a shield and I have a hyperdrive all for my ship. I don't even have a ship yet. Killing me. Uh, only in dust form. No rain. Uh, no monsoon begun. Phoenix is a day 21 of 110 degrees plus. That's why... You'll never catch me down in Phoenix or Texas or or New Mexico. I don't want the heat. You guys can have it. You guys can keep it. I don't want it. Oh yeah, we need to uh we need to make some uh what's it called? Some sodium nitrate. So, we got to take some of our sodium. Turn this into sodium nitrate. Uh, bling bling. Yes. Well, it's going to be one blinged out uh, C-Class when you get... Exactly, dude. Seriously. <laughs> it's going to be the best C-Class uh, ship ever made. I mean, technically, if it gets too crazy, like if I don't have enough uh, room, I'm going to have to delete them pretty soon here because I'm running out of space. I don't got any room in my inventory. And let's pop some more in there. Uh, 
when I was eight, my dad had a graduation in Phoenix in August. 14 years later, and all I can remember is the heat. Dude, yeah, I know. And every year I fall for the same trick. I'm like, okay, August is the last hot uh, summer or hot month of the summer, right? In September, it'll cool down. In Colorado, that's not true. We don't get snow. We don't, we don't get cold temperatures until October. So every year, it's every year, I'm always like, September, come on, it'll be cold. And it's still hot. It's still 80, 90 degrees in September. I'm like, oh, come on. You're killing me. This September is going to be really hot when uh, Starfield comes out. <laughs> All right. What else can we refine? Uh, we're going to do our larval cores. I was going to save them and sell them, but we can make some room by doing that. That way we can keep some of these upgrades while we can. We got to probably sell the, uh, get rid of the feceum. Get rid of that one. Doge Lord, Mr. Doge. Thank you for being a member for a month. One month member. You got you're freaking awesome. Thank you so very much. Says, hello, Jason, a bit late. What did I miss? Oh, we just talked about uh, VR headsets. We've been talking about heat, <laughs> you know, and talking about cars. Nothing really. I mean, we're trying to find a freaking ship and I can't find one right now. Other than that, we've just been chatting, talking about stuff. All right, so we have our stuff there. We just need a wiring loom. Oh, I can get rid of this and get wiring loom. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. And we got a free life support gel out of there. I appreciate that. So we're going to need some more life support gels. We need to get a, uh, what's it called? We need to get some more, what's it called? Um, carbon. But yes, Doge Lord, thank you for being a member for a month. Probably more than that. YouTube is freaking out. It, it Sometimes it tells me one month and you've been a member for like a year. I don't know. I just go by whatever YouTube tells me, but I know it's not accurate. Not always. Sometimes it is. And then Dr. Pong with five gifted memberships. Dr. Pong, freaking legend. Thank you so very much. Freaking amazing. You guys are not following Dr. Pong. You should be. Uh, are you streaming, Dr. Pong? I haven't seen a stream from you, from you in a while. I know you're busy with work, probably. But you guys should be checking out Dr. Pong's channel. She streams uh, No Man's Sky as well. So if you're into No Man's Sky, you can go check her out. And I think, I think you've streamed recently. I can't tell. I can't remember. Everything blends together, Dr. Pong. Forgive me. I forget. Where the heck? Okay, nothing here. We're going to go north. Oh, hey, bro. Maybe we should play together. Uh, Rife Scarf, dude. You want my bad luck? <laughs> you want my bad luck? I don't think you want my bad luck. Uh, Myrony, I would love for some snow in our rain, dude. I would love some snow. Land! So I can sell stuff. I would love some snow right now. I know we don't... Oh, wait a minute. Is that a... Is that a planetary archive, or is that a uh, crash freighter? We can go to a crash freighter. We can't go to a planetary archive. What is this? Is this a... Maybe that is a crash freighter. Has to be, right? Because it doesn't look like a planetary archive. Been super busy. Now you're on, now you're on vacation. Nice. We'll take some time off, play some games, and relax, man. Seriously, Dr. Pong, very much appreciate it. And relax. Vacation time. Maybe do a couple streams of, uh, you know, streaming with people. I don't know. Hanging out. The expedition is done. So I have a feeling, not, I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling that we are going to see an update pretty soon for No Man's Sky. Is that going to be next week? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe next week. But they had, they just had an, an internal update. Meaning the uh, the version of the game that no, that Hello Games plays, the developer plays, got updated. So I don't know if that means that they're getting ready to update. Like, are we going to see an emoji from Sean on Sunday? I don't know. But I'm excited. I can't wait. Maybe we'll have an update next week. 
Uh, left the uh, PS4 in LA. No! Why? Why? Well, I mean, it is a good thing sometimes. If you're on vacation, sometimes you just want to get away from everything and kind of and chill, relax a little bit. So maybe that is a good thing, Dr. Pong. Just to, to get it out. Get out get it out of the system for a while. Took a vacation last year. I went down to Texas. A family down there. And it was raining, thankfully, so I didn't have to worry about the heat. But I didn't take anything with me. And it was kind of nice to get out and you know, get away from gaming for a week. It was kind of nice. Yeah, more likes and watchers. Good. Yes, guys. Seriously. If you oh, God. I forgot. I don't have any inventory room. How do I do this? How do I mess with this? Um, Seriously, guys. If you if you already hit that like button, thank you so very much. But if you have not, I would super appreciate you guys doing that. Hitting that like button it really does help out the channel a ton when you do that so very much appreciated uh fusion core Radiation protection. uh 250,000 I'll take that that's a good one did I open this one up I don't even think I did I think I I came in here no I didn't because it was a uh, full oh crap I guess we we're doing that we're gonna get rid of the wheat Got a hyper droid. <laughs> I am so ready to do, you know, to use my starship. Cause good lord, I have all the upgrades. I got a hyper drive. Uh, I got hyper drive uh, fuel. Dude, I am ready to go. I'm ready to rock and roll with this thing. Seriously. What else can we get rid of? I, we got to get rid of the poop. I know. I wanted to keep it, but we got to get rid of it. Oh, I think I need 50. Oh, I can't refine that. Let's see. We'll grab this first, and we'll see if what we can refine. I think I can refine that Pugnium and turn it into uh, Nanites. Multi-tool expansion slot. Well, I can't use that. All right. All right. Uh, ditch the cube. I know I should. I'm getting there. I'm getting to the point now where I have to ditch that one. Got to get rid of that one. Maybe the silver and the gold because, I mean, yeah, gold's pretty good, actually. I think I need 50 Pugnium to make one Nanite. Let's see. I think it's 50. Well, let's check it. Oh, no, it's only 25. Okay, it's only 25. I thought it was 50. So I got one Nanite out of there. And now I can delete that uh, Pugnium that's left over. Um, where did that plug go? There you are. Boom. Now I can't use it, but I can sell this. I can sell it and make some money. I'll make 85,000 off of it, but I can't use it. The, the only reason I cannot use it is because the only way to upgrade your multi-tool is at the space station and we cannot go to a space station. So therefore we cannot use it. Uh, has Jason left the planet yet? Todd, I have not. I have not. Now go due north. Planetary items are laid out in a grid. Oh, really? Well, we're going due north then. We have been going north, Dr. Pong, so hopefully everything starts popping up. Come on! We need a ship. So due north. Let's go. Uh, please give some love to the goddess of No Man's Sky, everyone. Exactly, yes. Boom, boom, boom. Get out of there. Planetary items, crash freighters, outdoor posts, uh, outpost buildings. Yep, yep, yep. And I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard that if you follow the rings, if you're on a planet that has rings, they will, uh, it will line up with all the buildings and stuff. So that's another one to do too. There we go. Refill all that. Nothing. Um, is that a ship? Wait a minute. What are you talking about? What? What? Are you messing with me? Are you messing with me? I don't see anything. Is that a ship? 
I don't see anybody. Yeah, I don't see any green or anything. Uh, beacon behind you? Oh, that one? That's my nav marker, so I did this. That's what you're talking about. Or I have my starship, which is over an hour away. How do you get an analysis visor in this mode? Oh, you just you can just make it. So uh, you can build it. All you have to do is get 50 carbon, make a nanotube out of it, and then just install it. It's really easy to do. You're allowed to build everything. Now, I will say you are, you're limited on your uh, inventory, on your building blueprints. Like I can build one, like I can build that. Same thing for my multi-tool. I can build a bolt caster and I can build a personal force field, but I need wiring loom, which is really hard to come by. If you break a, an upgrade, you can get it. So there are ways to kind of get stuff. You can also get random blueprints and upgrades from your like buried caches. So like if I go over here, this might give me a, a random upgrade. Uh, or is it going to be a, in the middle of a mountain so I can't get it? So never mind. <laughs> so, but yeah, buried cache, uh, the uh, the damaged machinery, they will randomly give you a random upgrade or a random technology. So that is a way to do it as well. Like over here, damaged machinery. So as you're running around, you can just open these up. Most of the time, damaged machinery will give you nanites. But every once in a while, you'll get, like, uh, launch fuel. You'll get uh, an upgrade. You'll get, you know, random items. But, yeah, I got launch fuel. Great. I don't need that. <laughs> Thank you for the launch fuel that I don't need. Oh, there's a building over here. Let's see what this is. Too bad pirate stations don't have the multi-tool terminals. I wish. I know. That's exactly. I thought when we first started doing the fugitive out, uh, the fugitive runs, I thought for sure they did. They don't. There's no way to upgrade your multi-tool at a pirate outlaw station. You have to go to a regular uh, space station in order to upgrade it. And it's like, oh, man. And there's no other way to do it. There's no kiosk that you can make. Maybe, maybe a future, uh, a future update will give us the ability to do it. Because I don't know if you guys remember, we had an expedition back in, uh, in April that gave us a kiosk. We can build a base. And the, part of that was you had a, uh, a machine, you had a, an upgrade station to upgrade your multi-tools. I was like, dude, I want that. Oh, guys, we did it. Wait a minute. And it's an A-Class! Oh, yes! It's a shuttle! <laughs> this is gonna be the best shuttle of all time. Yeah! We are winning! And it has a supercharge! Yes. Look at that. Mother of the Michi, or Micah. <laughs> now, what we're gonna do is, you can claim it for free... And that's not a big deal. Or you can swap it out. The cool thing is, you don't get anything for swapping it out. Like, it's not going to give me any extra money. I'm not going to get any benefits from it. But it does remove the starter ship. So we're going to get rid of the starter ship by swapping our current or our broken one with this one. Yes. So now this is ours. So let's see what we could do here. Launch thruster is supercharged and working. So we just need a hermetic seal and a metal plating. I think I can make that, right? I can make the hermetic seal. I need more ferrite dust from metal plating. I need a little bit more of that. We got this, guys. We got this. The other thing is, what else do I need to do for the shield? Oh, my hyperdrive is broken. I'm going to need that. We need chromatic metal. We need chromatic metal. So... These little rocks right here. Oh, wait a minute. Not that one. This one? Yep. Yeah. Look at that. I get chromatic metal from the little rocks. Oh, yeah. While we're here, I can install some of my upgrades. So, like, my pulse engine module. Oh, I can only install two? Oh, crap. 
Can I fix any of this stuff? Oh, nope. Of course not. Oh, I can! I can do this! Yeah! Let's do it! So now I can put my, uh, my hyperdrive upgrade in here. Ha ha ha! Alright. And then, I can put my shield. I have two shield upgrades! Man! Dude, I am feeling good. Is that a good one? Ah, that's a decent one. It's fine. A uh, Schumann of La Mancha says, A ship! A ship! Yes! Got it! Thank you for the super chat. Very much appreciated. And yes, we did get one. I could also look for copper. We can get a bit... Oh, buried cash. Let's get the buried cash. Maybe there'll be another upgrade in here. Yes, thank you, Schumann. Very much appreciated, buddy. How do you, how can you find an S uh, Sentinel ship? Oh, you have to look for a while. So every crashed ship is going to be randomized. And Sentinel ships, they'll look the same, but the classes are all randomized as well. But you got to remember, the thing you got to remember is that S classes are very, very rare. So you're talking like 2% chance of getting an S class. So you have a 2% chance of finding an S class out in the wild. Very low. And so what you have to do is just go from ship to ship to ship and just find, keep looking. Just keep looking over and over again until you randomly run into it. There's no like special way to find one. It's just persistence. Just keep looking. There's no technique. There's no special item you need or anything like that. You just have to randomly run into one. Of course, I got rusted metal. Chromatic metal. Give me that chromatic metal. There we go. Uh, please recharge! Recharge the health! I got it. I did. I had to go get some oxygen. That's what I had to do. So let's grab some more over here. That way I could do this. Boom, boom. Done. There we go. I mean, I could just get some carbon and make some life support gels. I should probably do that. Let's grab that. Also, is this a new update? Emmett, no, it is not a new update. Not yet. So we're waiting on that. The, uh, the expedition finished, just finished earlier this week. And so now we are just waiting for the next update, whenever that's going to show up. We don't know. So hopefully soon, my, my gut says, my, my suspicions say that we're going to see one pretty soon. But no official word. We don't know. Excuse me, buddy. I'm going to come down here and get this copper because we need a whole bunch of chromatic metal. We need to fix our hyperdrive and we need to fix our shields on our ship. There was not a lot of uh, copper there. 64 copper. Killing me. Killing me. I should have put the warp hyper core in there. <laughs> Duh! Silver. All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to fix it up. And then we're going to get the heck out of Dodge. We're going to get out of here. So we need to get we need to find some uh copper, but I want to I want to get off the planet. Two and a half hours in, we found our freaking ship. We can get out of here now. Is there a specific amount of time you can encounter a crash ship in one system? What do you mean a specific amount of time? I don't think so. I think you could find it at any time. Like if you're talking about like how long before one shows up, no. It's more of luck of the draw. So they are very rarely, uh, they're randomly spread out over a planet. And then you randomly spawn on the planet. So you could spawn right next to one, or you could spawn, you know, an hour, two hours, three hours away from one too. So 
it's randomly generated. There's no, like, time limit. There's no, like, uh, special cases with, uh, ships. Any crashed ships. It's more of how lucky you are. And I learned how to make a teleport receiver for my ship. All right, we should be able to make a metal plating. There we go. So now that is fixed. I can use my microprocessors on there. We need our chromatic metal, though. We have sodium nitrate. We need more chromatic metal for that one. Our weapons are working, thankfully. So now what we can do is move some of this stuff over. All of our sellable items can go over to our ship. That way we have a uh, more room in our inventory. And we have five chromatic metal. That's not really working. Oh, yeah, we could do this. So it's full, 100% full. Warp cell efficiency. Nice. Okay. It's just it doesn't work yet. I know. Let's see. Can we find any chromatic metal around here? Any uh, copper? Let's go get this copper. You know what? I'm going to take my whole ship with me. Uh, looks like Jason finally found... Yes, legendaries did. Did find one. That's not copper. It's inside the... Oh, see? Thankfully, that's why I grabbed my... Don't you do that. I don't have any shields. So what we can do is just fly around and look for shiny parts of the ground because that'll be a... Uh, a... Uh, a uh, deposit. You can look for it. You want to look for the goldish looking ones. That is going to be copper or pyrite because there's pyrite in this uh, in this planet. Nothing. Yeah, left the planet two and a half hours. Ashen planet. What is this one over here? What is this planet? Let's see. High temperature planet. That's not going to help me. Um, what else? What other planets do we have? Let's look. Oh, that looks like a good one. Look at that. That color on that one. That one looks like it's going to be a good one. Is that a frozen planet? That looks frozen. Um, Hyborian planet. That's frozen. Forsaken planet. That's an anomaly planet. Come on. Sometimes you got to go in the first person. That way it kind of registers. Okay, there it is. And that one is a unstable planet. So we don't have any good planets in this system. Dang it. I was hoping for maybe some ancient bones or something like that. There we go on that. So let's go over here to the Forsaken planet. Uh, Midnight says, dang it, Miss Jason getting a ship already? Thought for sure he had Templus hours. No, not this time. This time it only took two and a half. But I don't have any shields, so that's going to make me nervous a little bit. We need to, um, I mean, technically I could delete, like, this upgrade. So it'll give me, uh, 50 chromatic metal, sodium, and wiring loom. And I need 60 for that one. I would need 50. Oh, see, I could. I could delete that one. But, I mean, yeah. I'm going to keep it as long as I can. So as long as we get copper, we're good. I just don't need anybody attacking me right now. So there should be copper. This is a dead planet. So I can't I don't have to worry about anything here other than like me dying from falling too far. But we're looking for a shiny deposit. Yeah, come on. No. 
It said there was copper here. Come on, copper. Dear God. <laughs> hey, you could do a weekly mission at the Nexus if you unlocked it. Yes. Yes, you can. It is a weekend event. So they give you extra uh, Quicksilver for that. If you're looking to get some cool stuff from the Quicksilver merchant, do that mission. It'll give you some good stuff. Are Sentinels aggressive here? They're observant. Okay, they're observant. I, I That's the one thing I didn't pay attention to was if they're, they're, they're crazy or not. Yeah, you still got to worry about the uh, monsters. Nah, there's nothing here. Look at it. Uh, fauna, empty. Flora, undetected. So there's no plants. There's no animals. Now, yeah, I mean, if you're talking about the biological horrors, then yeah, as long as you don't mess with the eggs, though, you're good. Just don't mess with the eggs, and you're fine. Cold is temperature. Oh, it's getting cold now. All right, let's see. We got to do this. Let's start refining some stuff here. Oh, yeah. 300 copper. Give me all of that copper. We got to get a whole bunch of uh, chromatic metal. There we go. No lag here. Seems fine. Yeah, I'm not seeing any lag on my end. I got no lag for me. Wait, you can't buy copper? You could, but I cannot go to the space station. So I'd have to buy it from a uh, an outlaw trader that would, you know, fly by or land near me or something like that. And you can't really depend on those because you don't know what they're going to have. Uh, is it laggy for anyone else? Oh, Mr. Skull Smasher. Yeah, nobody uh, or nothing on my end anyway. My end looks normal. I have no warnings over here. So yeah, it might be your internet is not working, you know, at full capacity right now. I know I, I, I feel your pain. I have the same issues with mine. My uh, internet provider decides when I can use my internet, you know. If it's okay, all that kind of stuff. All right, so now we have a hyperdrive. We're good on that. We need to just fix my shield, and we're good. Here we go, and get rid of it. We need some life support shells. Here we go. Yeah, we're good. Everything is awesome. All right. Got some platinum. Got to put some more in here. So now we should be, yep, one stack. Did we run out? Yep, fuel is crazy hard to get in this, uh, in the extreme difficulty. So let's put our shield up. All right. So now we need magnetized fluoride or magnetized ferrite, chlorine, paraffinium, pugnium, gold, chromatic metal, magnetized ferrite. We're going to need a lot of magnetized ferrite, it looks like. A lot of chromatic metal. Okay. So that is all chromatic metal. Excuse me. Platinum. And that's why I'm making a whole bunch of chromatic metal. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, thanks, chat. I thought it was uh, YouTube, but it is on my end. Oh, okay, yeah, and it happens. It happens, man. I know for me, my, uh, knock on wood, my internet provider decides every once in a while to just, like, hiccup, and I'll look over and OBS is like, oh, you're dropping all the frames. I'm like, oh, God, no. <laughs> but one day... One day I will have fiber internet and I will feel so good having fiber internet. I can't wait. It'll be the best ever. Well, let's see what we got going on with these rocks.
All right, I think we got all of them. Nope, that one over there. So what do they give us? Carbon, carbon. Ooh, we're going to get carbon and ferrite dust. I like that. Oh, we need to scan that one. Kit physics is still weird. Yeah, I don't think they'll ever get that one down. I think it's a good idea, but it's just it's just not going to work, especially like multiplayer. They, you don't even see the cape. All right. You know what? We'll just take it. Because I am about to clear out some... Uh, what's it called? Some ferrite dust and some uh, carbon, and we'll be okay. We'll take off, do that. And just shoot the ground. Get all that carbon, get all that ferrite dust, and we'll be good. Oh, look at this! I was right next to a freaking ancient ruin. Well, let's get this going, then. So... The reason why you want to land here is that there could be some really good stuff in here. So, it might not be good, but it might be really, really good. Let me grab that. There should be one right here. There's one right there. You need three keys to unlock the, uh, the, car the chest in the middle. So, we have one, two. So, to open this large artifact crate, we need three. There's one over here. Here we go. Now let's grab this. Hopefully there's something really good in the middle of this artifact crate. So, one, two, and three. The copper key, the jade and the crystal key, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, we got petrified beetle hair and it's not even worth that much. I was hoping for something really good. I mean, it's fine. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. I was definitely hoping for more than that. Alright, so now what we can do is... Uh, do a little bit of a pulse driving. That way we can get a an outlaw to trade with us. That way we can make some money and get, you know, make some room in our inventory as well. Oh, yeah, we, we can't do any story missions, so we can do this. We can listen to it, but you can't do any story missions because we're outlaws. We're trying to stay off the grid. So we're just going to kind of skip through this story mission. Just like, nope, we're not going to follow it, though. Well, we're doing this. We're, we're trying to pulse drive so we can get run right into a traitor. So, I'm hoping. Nope. Nope, nope. Plan it over here? Yep, well, let's go over here. Uh, the copper key, the jade key, and the crystal key. There you go, yep. How do you get the solar ship for the outlaw station? Oh, Dr. Pong! Go to an outlaw system and run around a planet and look for a solar ship. So that's just, you got to look for one on the ground, a crashed one. They are very rare, but now that we already have a ship, we can kind of just fly really low and slow on the ground or near the, near the surface and just fly low and slow and go around looking for a solar ship. Every once in a while, you'll get a trader that lands that has one, but it's really, really, really rare. <laughs> Usually they'll land and they'll have like an explorer or or they'll have a, a a hauler or something like that. So you can get a trader to land with one, but it's hard. Are we not gonna have a trader? Want to talk with me? I know. I'm trying to get a trader here. That way I can talk to him and earn some freaking money. I'm doing this when I get home. Yeah, Dr. Po there he goes. Oh, thank God. That took a minute. 
So now I can trade with him because he's a he's an outlaw, so he won't rat me out. Let's do petrified beetle hair, convergence cube, fusion cores, yes, salvage data, yes, 1.2 million. Coibex casing, multi-tool expansion slot. Again, normally I would keep this, but the only way to use this is to go to a regular space station, and we can't do that, so there's no point. We're never going to be able to use this thing, so we might as well just sell it. And silver, and gold, and... All right, what does he have? He has a whole bunch of gold. Nothing I want, though. Okay, good. Thank you. So, yeah, I would normally keep all that stuff. However, I would keep the multi-tool, but I can't use it, so there's no point. So, we made some money. Let's look around and see if there's any dissident uh, systems around us. So, what we're looking for is, like, with this one right here. I don't know if you guys can read it, but right here in the title. Actually, you know what I could do? I could do that for you guys. So... Game capture. Let me zoom this in for you. Right there. So what we're looking for is, you see how it says 18 light years, 18 LY, and then G3 in the middle, and then water? Instead of water, what we're looking for is a, a, a system that says dissident. So that's what we're looking for. Let me show you. There's probably going to be one around here. We might not be able to get to it, but I bet you it's around here somewhere. That says water. 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 There you go. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a system that says dissonant. That means there's a corrupted planet, you know, a, a sentinel planet in that system. Now, sometimes it lies. Don't trust it 100%. Sometimes it tells you it is, and then when you get there, it doesn't actually work. But that's all we can go with. So let's go there. So now that we've gone here, let's see. Go back into my map and let's see if it still says dissident on it. It does not. So this is not a dissident system. It's a lie. The other way you can tell is if you scan a planet, it will tell you that there's corrupted sentinels. There's corruption on it. But because we know it's not, it's never going to show us that. There's basalt over there. So they lied to us. Low atmosphere. Wind swept. Is this a... Nope, it's a regular system. It's not an outlaw system. So there's... I mean, you can find... No, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. You can find solars in any system. However, they show up more often in outlaw systems. That's why you want to do that. I have worthless cargo. Thank you. All right. But yeah, that's why you want to look for them in a uh, in a pirate, an outlaw system, because they they show up more often there. You, again, you could find. I could have found it in my first system. I could, if I would have flown around, it would have taken me a long, long time. But I could have found one. Ah, uh, you're always corrupted, Jason. That that is very true, Martin. That is very true. I am always corrupted. All right, so there's nothing in there. I hate that they lie to you every once in a while. Like, they sh they tell you, oh, yeah, it's totally corrupted. And you're like, no, it's not. That's a lie. There we go. This one says it's corrupted. This one should be corrupted. There's a weird bug to where the first system you go to it tends to not be a uh, corrupted system. I don't know why. Hopefully they fix that, but it's just a weird glitch that they do. This one says it's corrupted. Let's see. Are you? Are you corrupted? That one's not. Terraforming catastrophe. That one's not. <gasps> oh, this one looks like a good one. Aggressive sentinels. Man, that would have been a good planet too. Are you? You have to be, right? You're the last one. Dissonance detected. So, this is our corrupted planet right here. Uh, Legendary says, is Jason going to get the uh, the center in this stream? No, there's no way. 
<laughs> I need to find five glyphs. I need to find five grave sites. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that. I mean, maybe, but it's going to take me hours and hours and hours to do that. So there's no way. No way. Not in this one, anyway. So now we have some room. So let's get down in here. And you can tell a dissonant system because when you get down in here, there's going to be a purple filter on it. They're, in general, they all have purple filters. So everything looks purplish, like that. It's all going to be purple. And then when you land, it'll go to a natural color. There we go. We got our uh, crystals all over the place. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is you cannot get a, uh, a sentinel. Oh, my God. There's a ship right there. Or there's a uh, trading outpost right there. You cannot get a sentinel ship unless you get your radiant shards. And you cannot get a radiant shard unless you have an advanced mining laser. You have to have an advanced mining beam. Those are really hard to come by. Like, I can't go and buy one because I can't buy any upgrades. I can't go to a uh, normal place to do that. So you'd have to find one out in the wild or you have to learn the blueprint for it from it by finding crashed ships. And so that's technically what I'm doing right now. I'm looking for a crashed ship because you couldn't get a blueprint from that. Or, I mean, if we run into a, a encampment, I'll take that as well. I just thought of something. Is this an outlaw system? The one good thing about an outlaw system is the Sentinels don't come to save anyone in an, in an outlaw system. Is it? Let's see. Nope, it's not. Dang it. I was hoping maybe. You can tell by the info. It, it'll say black market. It's not a black market, so it's not a an outlaw system. You can also tell by looking at the... Uh, a space station. It'll say space station in a regular one. It'll say an outlaw station in a uh, outlaw system. What about black holes? I know you can't ask Polo, but if you happen upon one, is that cool? As far as I know, yes. The problem with that, uh, Dr. Pong, is you don't know where those go. <laughs> like, I mean, you could look it up and see where you're going to be, but... I mean, unless you know, like, where a black hole is going to be and where it's going to send you, it's not worth it, really. Because you will, you, number one, it breaks your, uh, it breaks your technology in whatever ship you're using. And then you, you could be sent even farther away from the center. I mean, it's possible you get closer, but more than likely you'll get farther away. Here we go. That is not a ship. Oh, we're about to hit water. Can't mess around with the water. Is that a ship? I don't think so. Doesn't look like one. I see a whole bunch of living stuff over here. What is this? Chlorine! We need a lot of chlorine, you guys. So we need all this. I'll take all of that. We can use that to fix our ship. So, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely use all this. Look at that. There we go. Easy enough. And now we have a whole bunch of the stuff we need chlorine for, right? There you go. Ten? I thought I needed like a hundred. We only need ten? I could do that. Um, 10 on that one. There you go. See, look at it. And you don't have to, you don't have to fix everything completely. Like if you only have this part now, it'll always be repaired and I can wait till when I get enough magnetized ferrite, it'll be halfway finished already. So that's why use whatever material, whatever material you have right now. And then later on you can finish it off. Activated copper. I don't have any of that. Oxygen, dioxide. Okay. So I just thought I needed more uh, chlorine than I actually did. I got way extra. Look at that. <laughs> there you go. 39,000. That's good. 
shoot the planet with this ship. I know I need to do that. I need to just do some sweeping stuff. But guys, we're gonna call it there because we are going to raid Ricey Starship Emporium. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. Ricey is playing No Man's Sky. I believe he's doing a community night right now. Yep, Friday chill free stuff. We are going over to Ricey Starship Emporium. If you're looking for a particular pet, if you're looking for a particular ship, you can go in there. They have multiplayer turned on. Join their game. They're able to trade off different ships and pets and whatever. Definitely go hang out. Hit the like button when you get over there. You guys are freaking amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out. I will see you on Monday. We might be doing a, uh, a pineapple Pepsi and uh, pineapple pizza stream. But I will see you guys over at uh, Ricey Starship Emporium. Seriously, guys, thank you so much for hitting that like button and hanging out today. Very much appreciated. Let's go over to Ricey's stream.